So the idea here tonight, today, whenever you may be watching, is strategy is such a vital component of doing anything successfully. Like the thing, like I say all the time, the things that we talk about here at Alloy Seven, you know, we're focused on helping you build your social media and specifically your YouTube presence, your channel, build a valuable channel, be able to get the views and the subscribers, and hopefully even the money that you want to earn from your channel. But Truthfully, what I'm bringing to you is basically 20 years of experience coaching myself, not, not me coaching me, but I have been coaching professionals, football players, fitness people, soldiers, you name it, for the better part of 20 years. So what I'm bringing you here are principles of success that, are, that apply to pretty much any area of your life. Like I've said a couple of times, in our academy that I run here, which you'll We'll talk about that uh, later on in the video, uh, but I've posted links to it if you're curious about what that is. We have folks that are using the principles I teach in the academy to go out and get not only better YouTube channels, but better jobs, better careers, things that they want to do in their life. So what I'm sharing with you here isn't just specifically related to YouTube. And that's an important point because many people come to the platform thinking that there is a list of tips and tricks and tools that you need to understand that are just unique to YouTube success. When there is some truth to that, there's some things you need to understand about how Google works, how Google makes its money and why it behaves the way it does and how that affects YouTube. Truth be told, the big picture frameworks for success that I'm imparting to you are applicable to any area of your life. Whether you wanna be a professional YouTuber or a professional football player, a professional soldier, a lot of what I'm telling you about is going to help you in that regard. And remember, it's not just my knowledge. You know, if, if we were going to rely just on the knowledge that I have, you'd be wasting your time here. Okay. That's why when you look at my bookshelf, I have hundreds, if not thousands of books. I don't have everything here on the shelf because it doesn't fit. Because here's the deal. This is something that I, I burn into the head of the people, heads of the people that I coach. You need to learn to be smart enough to know that you're dumb enough to need to get smarter people than you to coach you and whatever you want to do. Why do I have more books than video games on my shelf? Simple, because I'm smart enough to know that I'm dumb enough to need to ask for help. And that's not an insult. It's just human existence, all right? People way smarter than me, years and centuries before me, figured things out that I don't need to figure out on my own through trial and error. I can just read what they did. Okay, so this, the success principles that I'm bringing here aren't just my personal opinion. They're the opinions and really the facts brought to us by people way smarter than me, from Sun Tzu all the way to Peter Drucker to C.S. Lewis, okay? So I want you to drive that into your mind, all right? Be smart enough because what I deal with in a lot of people that I coach in any aspect of life, especially men, women for whatever reason, and there's some science behind it, I won't bore you with that here, Women don't struggle with this issue as much as men. Coming to the table thinking you already know everything. Like once upon a time I had a person ask me about doing YouTube titles from an SEO perspective. And I gave him the textbook, and I do mean textbook, 1300 pages I think textbook on SEO that I'm trained in, answer, and then he's gonna, he disagreed with it. Oh no, I do it this way because I know from my four months of experience that this is the right way to do it. I didn't give him my thoughts on it. I gave him what the people who invented SEO said about it, okay? And invented SEO is not the proper term, but the people who understand how YouTube and Google's algorithms work because they're the people that built the stupid thing. <laughs> I gave them that answer, and he was like, oh, no, no, I'm good. I, I'm not going to do it the way you're suggesting because I know this works better. Don't be that dude, Okay. Be the person who's smart enough to know that you're dumb enough to need to ask for help. And that goes for me too, okay? The reason why I am qualified to come before you and give you information is because I know I was dumb enough to need to look up the information, and that's what I'm passing on to you. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything great here in the comments section. So Weinberg says, how do we get money? How do you lose 90,000 subs? Uh, it was in the email. If you read the email that I sent out, that's how I lost 90,000 subs. If you just joined the mailing list, you're going to get that email tomorrow. Okay, so you got the first email, which is just telling you my story tonight. I sent it out. You'll get the 90,000 subs email tomorrow, along with a free copy of my ebook. So stay tuned. All right. And make sure you read the email because the ebook is at the end. 
Most people get the email, they're like, I never got your book, jerk. And I'm like, because you didn't read the email. I put it at the end specifically to make you read the email because there's a lot of good information in there. And I know human beings have the attention span of a titsy fly. So that if I don't build something, like it's not me being manipulative, it's me knowing how human minds work. And I'm trying to impart something to you. And I have to do these things to get you to engage, okay? So let's say, uh, I need these tips. I mean, I do have 66 subs in a little over a year, which is good, but it could be better. Yep, we could all be better. I hear for not only something I always wanted to do, do I also want to support my, okay. So you're doing YouTube because you want to support your family. That's, that's a good goal, all right? Cool, all right, so I'm not missing too much of anything else in the comment section. So again, this idea of strategy, and remember, later on in the video, and actually if you wanna do it now, it's in the video description and it's in the comments toward the top, I've left you links for how to get my YouTube Gamers Survival Guide completely for free, okay? I typically charge 20 bucks for it. I've been giving it away for free for the better part, I think of a month now, uh, just because I wanted to. I wanted to have something substantial to give away of value such that you would know I am in the game to help you get to whatever your goals are. Okay, that's the whole reason I'm doing it, is to help better you. Now, here's the risk I am taking by not selling it to you. And the risk has nothing to do with me because the $20 that I make on that book, believe me, pales in comparison to what I do in my business life, okay? Alloy 7 is not, by any stretch, my primary source of income. And I don't intend it to be. Okay, this is something I do because I love doing it. I am the consummate coach. I love coaching. This is an area where I have some knowledge and it allows me to help some people make a little bit of change uh, on the side. The risk is not me losing $20. Believe me, I don't miss that at all. The risk is that if I give it to you, and this is the commitment I want you to make. In fact, I want you to write this in the comment section. The risk that I take in giving it to you is really your risk. Because remember, you pay attention to what you pay for. You don't respect what you get for free. So the risk I am taking in giving it to you is that you might not read it. And believe me, I know who's reading or not reading the book because I can see the stats. All right? Like some people who I give it to don't even download it. Okay? Because you pay attention to what you pay for. So in the comment section, I want you to write, I will read your free ebook. I want you to write that. I want you to commit to taking the time. It's not a very long book. In fact, I kept it shorter than some of the other SEO books out there on purpose because one, I understand human attention span, but two, I'm a person of efficiency. I don't like things to be longer than they need to be. And here's something you'll learn about books. Most books are hundreds of pages because the author wants to sell them to you. But inside these books, for example, Sam Walton's book, uh, Made in America, you may not be a fan of Walmart, but I'm a fan of anybody. Uh, I'm a fan of anybody's intellect that helps them make $160 billion, okay? Even if my goal is not to make $160 billion, I'd say $160 billion means there was some sex, sex. <laughs> there was some success along the way. So even if all of their methods aren't something I agree with, they did something right. I think we can agree they did something, even if they did a ton of things wrong, and that's debatable, they did something right. But the point is, this 300 plus page book, really, and I'm not gonna read it to you because you should go out and buy it, it's a $5 book for God's sake, and read it yourself. You can get everything you need on pages, let's see, 315 through, how far does it go? 315 through 317. Why is the book 300 and some odd pages? Because they want to sell it to you. And so books put a bunch of filler in there to make sure you feel like you got your money's worth. Because remember, human psychology, we're, humans are kind of not the brightest stars in the sky with the way our minds are, have evolved to work. And it's not a criticism to any of you, it's just the way we are, okay? So these, I kept the book short, but I kept it very valuable. All right, to respect your time, not make you read a bunch of filler. And like, I hate books that go into anecdotes. Let me tell you a story that you couldn't care. Like, like if you're going to tell me a story, be a Tony Robbins storyteller and tell me something. Like, he tells a story in his book about this dude that escaped a German concentration camp during World War II. I read every word of that story because it was extremely 
intense and engaging. Most anecdotes in books are boring. And I didn't want to put a bunch of that in there and have a bunch of filler just so I could justify selling a $20 book. I wanted to give you what you need. All right, so that link is in the video description right now. It's alloy7.tv slash ebook. You'll join the mailing list. I send out a series of emails. In the second email, the book comes. Download link for you to go get it. Let's see. So the game machine says, yo, seven is my favorite number, says Wyverns. Can we get this online, not mail? Yes, it is online. It, the email is going to come to you and you're going to download it. It's, it's an ebook. It's not a physical book. So Weinberg says, I will read your book, I promise. Nice website, says Chase the Gamer. Thank you. Okay, good. So everybody's still tracking along here. Now, I've also got a link. You guys have heard me talk a lot about the YouTube Ninja Academy. It used to be called the YouTube Gamers Academy. I adjusted it because I didn't want to just work with gamers. And I felt like I had reached kind of the threshold of gamers as it were. So I wanted to start working with other types of creators as well. Uh, I do other types of content on YouTube. In fact, to me, I enjoy some of the other content. I do a little bit more than gaming. So I wanted to reach out to people like that as well. Link in the description. Uh, and if you join, I think if you join tonight uh, and you go all the way to the blue belt level, you get like a hundred bucks off. So take that in consideration. But enough about that. We'll talk about the details of that later. If you're interested, we'll have that discussion at the end. Let's jump into the lack of strategy conversation. In the last two weeks ago, because I didn't film last week because I was busy, we talked about strategy without tactics is the longest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is what we're going to talk about tonight because this is literally 99% of the people I work with. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. Meaning if you don't have strategy in YouTube or in anything else that you're doing, you are going to lose. All these goals and dreams that you guys are telling me about, you ladies are telling me about, about supporting your family based on what you're doing on YouTube. If you don't understand how to build a strategy, that's going to help you get that. I'm not talking about a plan. I'm not talking about my strategy is to do gaming and I'm going to upload videos three times a week. That is not a strategy. That's a system. You know, that's an idea. That's not a strategy. Okay, no, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through what strategy is. Keep calm. If you don't know what it is, don't feel bad. We all start where we start. Okay, I've had 20 years head start on some of you, so be cool. But the bottom line is this is where this tactics without strategy is where 99% of the people that I talk to every day. I talk to people on YouTube and Facebook every day about growing YouTube channels. Every day. Oh, and on email too, because I get emails from folks. I, I give my email out to the public. I don't care. You can email me. It's fine. I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm not going to hide behind social media. If you want to email me, email me. It's fine. This is where 99% of the people live. You've got all your tactics figured out, and I'm going to do end cards, and I'm going to use this Miley Cyrus song. And I'll, Ah, stop it. If you don't get the stuff over here on the right figured out, the strategy, all these tactics are just going to be a very quick way for you to not grow. And for the people that I've helped who will tell me, I've been on YouTube eight years and only have 300 subscribers. That's not winning. Okay, it might not be losing. It's not a criticism. Uh, let, me, let me rephrase it. If you've been on YouTube for eight years and you only have 300 subscribers and your goal is to have more subscribers than that, that's not winning. And it means that you are not applying principles, one, because you may not know them, or two, it worse, if you do know them and you're just refusing to implement them, it's even worse, I imagine it's more the first one, you don't know them. So you don't know why. Like I remember people that I've worked with, I searched some of their videos and showed them in analytics and in search ranking why their video was winning. And their response was, oh, I didn't even know this video was ranked that high. That's a problem. And I'm not saying that to criticize the person at all. But what I'm saying is that's evidence of the fact that you don't understand some of the things you need to know to win. Some of the things that you have to do on a regular basis to win. Okay? And that's what I want to help all of you here with tonight. Remember, tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. And 99% of the people that I deal with on Facebook, uh, on YouTube comments, and in email live in tactics. 
Why? Because strategy is hard and it's scary, mostly because you've been taught it wrong or you haven't been taught it at all and it's daunting. You hear the word strategy and you don't know what it really means. You know, some of you may start thinking about strategy role playing games and it's no, it's that's all tactics and planning. We want to get into the strategy and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So to help you understand strategy, let's first talk about what strategy is not. Okay? And again, this is where I spend um this is where I spend the bulk of my time with YouTubers. Strategy is not sending me messages about Will you please come check out my logo? Okay, I get that question all the time. Can you help me? What's the best software for me to make my channel art? Okay, it has nothing to do with strategy. Can I use this 50 cent song? And I, I, at least once a day, I get a, how can I use this famous person's song on my video question? Like, and these are from people who haven't, and it's not always, but a lot of times it's from people who haven't even started, you haven't even started your channel yet and you're already asking me about how to use a 50 cent song on a Grand Theft Auto video. That has to sound insane to you. Not because you're insane, okay? And before tonight, maybe it didn't sound insane to you, but it needs to. Because you are focusing on such a minute detail that at the end of the day is not going to help you reach any of your big picture goals. It's not. Okay? You saw a successful person do this and you think, oh, the key to success is Grand Theft Auto 5 video, 50 cent song, upload and I'm going to be a millionaire. Wrong. Not how it's going to happen. And so you've got so focused and it happens all the time. I get people that nitpick stuff. You nitpickers, you folks that focus on these freaking hair on the back of a fly details cut it out at least right now like you can pick nits later right now we've got to focus on building a framework of success and you're too focused on can i use this Beatles song on my video no and for the record no like if people ask me can i get how do i go about getting permission from 50 cent to use this song how do i reach out to him you don't because 50 Cent, first of all, is not who you're going to go through to get access to that. But more importantly, let's forget about permission for a second. Do you understand that movies that use copyrighted music pay upwards of hundreds of thousands, or TV shows, hundreds of thousands of dollars to be able to use the music because they purchase what's called a license to use said music in a commercialized, in a monetized, or non-monetized video. In fact, some companies require that if you use their stuff, it's for commercial purposes. I think Disney's one of those. I researched that a long time ago. That may be off. But the point is, you're so focused on this intricate little detail that's not going to help you reach any of your goals for viewership, watch time, subscribers, building a community, reaching people and changing lives, which is what we should be focused on, is providing people content that actually enriches their life in some way, shape, or form, which we will get to over here on the strategy side in a second. You're so focused, and please don't mistake my passionate delivery for frustration or anger or criticism because it's none of the above. It's a genuine desire to want to see you win and to empower you. You know, I talk about personality types of life. I'm an ENTJ. We live to be empowered and to empower other people. NTs are representative of Prometheus, you know, the God that went and got fire from, took fire from the gods and brought it down to the people. That's, that's what I live for. So I get passionate when people are doing things that are killing their ability to be empowered, it, it, they don't frustrate me, but what they're doing frustrates me because it's keeping them from what they want to see happen. All right? So cut it out with the, can I use this song in my, like, forget about songs in your videos. If you don't have all of this stuff over here figured out first, you shouldn't even be talking about the stuff. How do I build end cards? What should, what's the best upload schedule? What's the best day to upload videos? Are you kidding me? All right? No. There's no best day to upload videos. Okay? Now, you can use some mathematics to determine, and there's apps that will help you do this. You should upload on Thursdays because statistically, when you've uploaded on Thursdays during the winter solstice at 6 p.m., you've gotten the most watch time. But that's correlation. 
This mathematics is not, it's not causation at all. It's just showing you mathematically, here is where you've won in the past, so you may want to consider continuing to do it. What if you consider, continue to do it, you don't get the same results? It's just a correlation. Cut it out. Sub for sub. I don't know how often I get, I, 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 other than the fact that I understand human biology and psychology fairly well, if I didn't, I would be shocked that sub for sub still happens. Because it is well documented on YouTube that doing sub for sub is so foolish and ridiculous, unnecessary and lacking in value that it's not hard for me to believe that people still do it because I understand how the selfish gene and our human makeup works. And we want people to support us and be a part of what we're doing and help us reach our goals. Okay? It's a very sub for sub is a very selfish thing. You don't you're not subbing to me because you found value in what I did. You're subbing to me hoping it's gonna take your number up. It's completely selfish. And for lack for lack of a nicer way to say it, because I'm not gonna soft glove stuff with you guys. I'm gonna keep it real with you always. Sub for sub is idiotic. It just is. If what I'm providing to you is not valuable. And all I represent to you is the opportunity to make your number go from whatever it is to one number higher. Just if you think about it for 30 seconds, you understand how idiotic it is. And here's why it's idiotic. Because think about all the time you're wasting coming to popular channels and commenting on their videos, asking them to sub for sub. Which, by the way, YouTube's filter filters out. So nobody else sees that comment except me before I delete it. Because it goes into a filter, if you didn't know already. It's selfish and it's idiotic because that's time you could be doing work over here to actually make content that doesn't suck. Okay, because at the end of the day, the reason why you don't have views and subs is usually for two reasons. Either your content sucks or you're not, you may be making great content, but making it for people who don't, you're making something that people don't necessarily want to watch. Okay, that's oversimplified. There's more to it than that. But you could almost usually very generally put it into one of two bins. Either your content completely sucks and nobody wants to watch it, or you're making something that somebody doesn't want to watch. Okay? Again, oversimplified. There's more to it than that, but those are the two most simple things that I can point to almost immediately. And really, they're both the same thing. Like, one of the, one of the keys to being a business and a marketing success is building the right product for the right people at the right time. If you're building the right product at the wrong time, it sucks. It could be the greatest thing in the world. Like, for example, the first computer, I think, was built in the 1800s. But there was no electricity, like, <laughs> when the concept of the first computer was built. And we didn't have a lifestyle. We were a much more agricultural society. What do we need a computer for? Right? Wrong time. Right product, wrong time. Fast forward 100 years, and it's, it's huge. So that product back then, even though it may have been objectively good, it sucked. Okay, so understand when I talk about sucking, it's not a personal attack. You know, like I love what Coach Arians says when he's, when he's welcoming new players. Coach Arians is the uh, head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. And he says, look, I'm going to tell you, you know, if what you're doing on the field sucks, I'm going to tell you. But it's, I'm not attacking you personally. I like you personally. I'm just talking about your football. It's your football that sucks. Okay? Please come check out my channel. Nothing wrong with that. You want people to see your work and give you an opinion. Um, you know, second set of eyes, if you will. There's nothing inherently wrong with this. But again, you know, if, if you're not already at least got some momentum towards your goal, you know, coming somewhere and asking them to check out your channel isn't necessarily wrong and it's not idiotic like Sub for Sub is, but it's not the optimal decision. Okay, it's not the optimal action. There's something else. Have you ever heard of the concept of opportunity cost? Meaning what you want, opportunity cost is what basically what you give up in order to get something else that you want. So you gave up time to come on my channel and ask me to check out yours. That's time you could have been investing into this. And if you spent more time over here, I might find your channel one day because you're making something that I need or that I desperately want which is what we're going to talk about when we get into strategy. Let me pause for a second here, take some comments. So Weinberg says the book costs money. No, no, no. 
Yes, the book costs money, but you, my friend, are going to get it for free. That's what happened when you signed up on the mailing list. You're going to get an email, and in that email, it's going to give you a free copy of the book. You're not going to be charged for it. Let's see. Chase the Gamer says, it's hard to do YouTube with school as well. Okay, we'll touch on that. Um, Out of Sight says, hey, B, I had my cold shower this morning. Excellent. <laughs> You've been on one of the previous calls. Uh, Game Machine says, hey, B, how do I use Smash Mouth song in my Shrek 2 Let's Play? <laughs> that's one of our, that's actually one of our ninjas uh, in the academy making fun of me. Heavy Metal Bake Sale. Wow, long time, Heavy Metal Bake Sale. Good to see you. Tip for anyone about Channel Art Network. A guy who I podcast with made all my channel art in exchange for me writing and recording a theme song for his intro video. Stuff like that works. Cool. Nice, I'll keep that in mind. Weimer says, people say that you need an uploading schedule to get people to keep coming to your channel. Isn't that a strategy? No. No, an upload schedule is not a strategy. It's a system. Okay, yes, you do need an upload schedule. But the point is, tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. In other words, if you just focus, so all of these things over here aren't inherently bad, except sub for sub, because that's absolutely retarded. Okay, but all this other stuff over here is good stuff, except for the can I use a 50 cent song in my video. I, I wish... This obsession that YouTubers have with putting other people's music in their videos, it borderline drives me nuts because I have to answer questions about it every single day. And it's like, if you just Google using copyrighted music on a derivative or a transformative work, it'll tell you, like, you got to go to ASCAP and BMI. You have to pay these fees. Like, and then even if you do pay those fees, because I used to pay those fees to operate public spaces, even if you do pay the fees, YouTube is still going to flag it whether you pay for it or not. So it's a waste of time, okay? But other than those, an upload schedule is a good thing. Getting people to check out your channel is a good thing. They can critique you, they can encourage you, okay? Logo and channel art, those are, sure, those are kind of important things, but they're so far down on the priority list that we can't talk about that until we have this figured out. So yes, you do need to upload videos regularly. You do need an upload schedule, but that's not a strategy. So if all you do is determine your upload schedule without doing any of the stuff we're going to talk about over here, you're going to lose. Good question. Not trying to be hard on you. That is a good question. Let's see what we got here. So deadly... Psycho says, did you juggle military with YouTubing? I'm wondering how you do it when I may be moving a lot. No. So I was out of the military by the time I started. Well, I guess when I technically started YouTubing, I was still in the reserves. I'm not now. Um, but I, I wasn't doing anything military-wise to need to balance it with YouTube. Because YouTube has never been where I do my full-time stuff. Like... Where I do my full-time work is in coaching people in the real world, okay? I do, YouTube for me is really just an outlet to reach more people and to create brand awareness and to basically enrich lives of other people who otherwise wouldn't have access to me. But what I do, um, YouTube for me is just complimentary or supplementary. It's just a tool that I use to aid me in what I do. It's not my primary source of income, okay? So I never really would have, even if I were still, even if I were in the military, I wouldn't have to juggle because what I'm doing here is, you know, I'm serving the public basically with what I'm doing here. And I get some, I get some type of monetary return from it sometimes when people join my programs or download my stuff. Um, but what I do on YouTube is typically for free and it alerts people to, oh, this dude does all kinds of other, you know, like one of my primary focuses is on life strategy coaching. And I focus on a lot of different areas from uh, health and fitness to uh, career counseling. That's a huge one that I do. Okay, relationships. These are things that I do that YouTube would not really allow me to do 
to at least the way I do it, YouTube, because it requires even folks that I work with who I, I can't physically go see, I wouldn't use YouTube in order to reach them. Does that make sense? So that's a great question, by the way. So, uh, MimBK, I think, so you guys have to forgive me. If I say anybody's name wrong, this monitor completely sucks for being able to see people's names because uh, it, it, it's almost like whited out. But I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Let's see. All right. So Chase said, it's hard to do YouTube with school as well. So let's address that. Um, I think one of the challenges I find with most people in any area that I coach is that they want overnight results. So the reason someone may say it's hard to do YouTube and school is because you don't under, you may not understand the principle of what we call counterbalancing. All right. And it's not my principle. Like I said, I get my stuff from people way smarter than me. This is actually a, a principle established by Gary Keller, who's I think the most lucrative, um, real estate tycoon globally. And so he wrote a book called The One Thing. And in it, he says, what most people try to do is they try to balance their life. Like, I'm going to dedicate this much time to school, this much time to my YouTube channel, this much time to my family and my friends. And they try to fit, they try to cram all of that into each day instead of counterbalancing and saying, okay, once I understand my strategy, I can say, okay, tomorrow my plan is I'm just going to focus hardcore on YouTube. And then... The next day after that, I may have to go hardcore on school and put YouTube to the side. And what most people want is such fast exponential growth, which goes against every success principle on the planet. Uh, there are people who see success faster than others. But if you take a person like Mark Zuckerberg, who, who is one that people will point to, well, look at how fast he became a billionaire. Yeah, but how many people do that? Not very many. And there were a lot of factors that had to fall into place, not just his own intelligence, because he is an insanely intelligent human being. Uh, if you've ever been in a room with him and heard him speak, seriously, that guy is insanely smart. Uh, so not only is he just viciously talented and intelligent, he also had a lot of factors and timing that hit at the right time for him to be able to reap those rewards. Bill Gates, as a counterpoint, it took him 20 years of building to get to his, to be the richest man uh, in the world. And so, or at least in the United States, or I think he actually may have been the rich, richest man in the world for several years. The point is it didn't happen overnight. And so why it's hard is people grind and grind and grind and they burn themselves out on YouTube because they're trying to get success so quickly instead of just building, um, a sustainable strategy, which is what Peter Drucker would talk about, uh, where instead of I'm going to build my channel to a million subscribers in a year, say, well, I can build a channel to 10,000 subscribers in a year. And then in two years, maybe I can get to 100,000. You know, that's even that is insane. Like the stock market doesn't do anywhere near that well. That's a lot of growth, but it's doable. And then you know, as you go through, you can start to see some of the exponential growth that you like to see. But what most people want is I want that one thing that hit that's going to make me a millionaire overnight. And so they get you get discouraged because it doesn't come quickly. So with trying to balance school or counterbalance in this case, sometimes you need to focus on YouTube. But sometimes you need to focus on your studies. You need to counterbalance them properly so you can win at both. But what that means is you have to prioritize. School is probably more important than YouTube to you for right now. So YouTube takes a back seat. Maybe your YouTube channel grows a little slower than you'd like it to, but that's okay. All right? It doesn't have to be a million-dollar thing by tomorrow. You've got time. As long as you're working it when you can, that's cool. All right? So instead of feeling this pressure that I have to grow, I have to be fast, and I have to work, burn myself out doing it, just say, you know what? I'm going to commit to uploading one video a week. I have a second channel right now where I just sent out an email to my mailing list that says how I went from zero to 400 subscribers in a little less than a month of active uploading. Now the channel has existed for several months, but I took three months off because I was doing other stuff. I was counterbalancing. I said, right now, this isn't my priority. Every once in a while I'd upload a video, videos that didn't do particularly well because they were in line with my strategy, but I was adjusting my strategy at the time. And then when I started to really hone in on my strategy and do my market research, which we'll talk about here in a second, I just, it hit like lightning. 
and then all of a sudden I'm doing more subscribers per day on that channel sometimes than I do even on Alloy 7, which is a channel that's a hundred times bigger. Because I sat down and I might upload a video. I upload no more than three videos a week at the most. Usually it's just one. But I understand the principles of success that I'm teaching here such that I can get that, I can get some of those exponential spikes because I know how to counterbalance and I know when to focus and when to go hard. There will come a time where I have to focus really hard on what I'm doing there. Right now is not the time. Right now I can just kind of ride the wave because I've built the structure, I've built the framework and I've built the strategy and the goals and objectives associated with the strategy such that I don't have to burn myself out. Like a matter of fact, right before this live call, I filmed next week's video. It took me about 25 minutes. I got some editing to do on it. I'll be done for the week. You know, and maybe I'll do a second video if time permits. I may do that tomorrow. Depends on what I have going on. But I don't have to. Okay? And now I'm not burnt out and I gotta get to a million subscribers tomorrow. No. I just I just have a goal to let's just get to a thousand. Just a thousand subs. And, and because what I do, I don't need a ton of subscribers in order to earn money. Because again, I'm not pulling AdSense is never, ever going to be my primary source of income. Because I can make so much more doing and providing better value in person and in other programs than just coming on YouTube once, twice, three times a week. Okay? Great question. Let's see. Weinberg says, I think you're a good person because you're helping people uh, soar into the sky with what you teach them. Okay, cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for the compliment. Deadly Psycho says, change the chat window to night mode. Yeah, I should. Let me see if I can. It's a great, great point. If I can see my mouse. No, nope, it won't let me mess with it. Oh, well, we'll worry about that later. Any books you would recommend? Yes. Tons of books. Matter of fact, a bunch of them are up here. Lessons of History, Managing Oneself. Uh, one book that we actually teach on in our YouTube Ninja Academy is please understand me. I fundamentally believe that our biology and psychology, uh, you know, outside of my spiritual beliefs, just the natural world beliefs, um, they govern human behavior. And the more you can understand about you and other people, the better off you're going to be. Like the first lesson I teach in every coaching program I do, whether it's YouTube and social mar social media marketing, which is what we're doing here, or it's um, fitness training. I have a fitness program that I'm working on. I have a program that I'm working on for uh, combat veterans transitioning to civilian life because it's extremely hard and it's a huge passion of mine to be able to help those men and women. Every coaching program I, I do starts with a personality test and a discussion about how that, what implications that has for where you want to go. Okay, so that's one great book you can start with. Let's see. How do you deal with the inner monologue of never feeling good enough to make compelling content? Um, you stop listening to it, first of all. Uh, and you learn, and knowledge would be my answer to that. The more you know, or like Warren Buffett says, the more you learn, the more you earn. But that monologue is there probably because you might be underdeveloped. I mean, do you think Tom Brady, before he goes into like, Let's not use Tom Brady. I'm going to use somebody who actually had a quote because he was asked. One of my favorite comedians is Dimitri Martin. And he was doing an interview. It was an awesome interview. And it's a great interview for anybody that wants to learn how success actually works. People don't understand this dude's been doing comedy for over 20 years. And uh, you just found out about him about 12 years ago, maybe, if you're me. Uh, but he had been in the game since the 90s. And the, the dude doing the interview is like, so do you, do you get nervous before you go on stage? He's like, no. I've been doing this 20 years, man. Like, I'm not nervous. Even if I go up on stage and bomb, I know I'm good. Why is he able to have that confidence? Because he put 20 years into building the expertise in show business. So what you'll find is that monologue is there. Uh, learn to work with the monologue. Because what most people will say is you just need to be positive. No, don't just be positive. Develop the skill. Be good enough that nobody can deny that you're great. So for example... I know that I know that I know I am skilled in leadership because I have been trained as a leader 
from the time almost before I could speak English as a child. I was raised by a career military leader, okay? So that is a part of my DNA. And not only was I raised by one, I spent the time developing those traits in myself. So when I step into a room and I have to take charge of an organization or a group of people or an operation, there is no inner monologue telling me that you may not be good enough because I know that I'm good enough. Not because I'm great, but because the shoulders of the men and women that have coached me that I'm standing on are great. And they've prepared me for that moment. Mentors, my father, my mother, okay? People in my life who have prepared me for that. So when I walk into the room, there is no inner monologue that I'm not ready to make this happen. I know I can make it happen. Let's go. But the only reason I can have that confidence is not because I'm arrogant or not because I'm puffed up with some type of pride. It's because I have put the time in to get good. I have put the study in to know what I'm talking about beyond a shadow of a doubt. Doesn't mean I'm always right. Doesn't mean that everyone would agree that I'm a great or good leader. Most people would, okay? And part of being a good leader is knowing when to get the hell out of the way. I know that too. Sometimes being a great leader is taking your hands off and letting the people that you're working with shine and do what they do best, okay? All principles that people smarter than me grabbed me by the back of my shirt and showed me how to do. So there is no inner monologue. The inner monologue is probably there. You need to think of it as a positive thing. It's trying to motivate you and tell you maybe you need to put some more time in developing your skills. But don't overdo it, especially if you're an introvert. Introverts have a tendency to be perfectionists and you want everything to be perfect before you take action. Take action and learn from it. Because just learning and getting the book knowledge is great, but you have to be able to apply it. And so you need something like YouTube or some type of event that you're involved in that allows you to test what you've learned and to develop the confidence, okay? Okay, so I think we've beat the tactical horse to death. All right, so tactics and systems and upload schedules and upload times and days and you know people thinking branding is logos and artwork which it's not this is not this so the point of me going through all this and harping on it so long is that this is where 99 percent of the youtubers that i work with whether they're in my academy and paying for coaching or the folks that just take you know heed to my free stuff this is where we all live right here and all of this stuff that at the end of the day doesn't really matter that much, relatively speaking. Nothing on this side of the board. Your logo, I'm telling you right now, your logo is never gonna be responsible for your success. Your channel art is never gonna be responsible for your success, okay? Using copyrighted music in your videos is never gonna be responsible for your success. End cards are never gonna be responsible for your success. Your upload schedule, is never gonna be responsible for your success. In fact, you're gonna change it multiple times. Sub for sub is, is ridiculous and stupid, so just don't do it, I'm not even gonna mention that. Um, I was on a call, a live, um, so, I'm trying to remember how long ago it was, but not too long ago I was on, well, actually, I was in a meeting, call, coaching situation with the completionist. Okay, you guys know the one game or the completionist. And I got to go behind the scenes into their operation. Okay, this isn't just a dude who turns on a camera and films himself doing silly stuff and playing video games. This is a business. This is a strategic operation. I got to sit in on one of their business meetings with all of their employees. Okay, this is a business that hires people. Not just a hobbyist who makes videos in a basement, like they're in an office where they show up to work and have meetings and discussions. And I got to go behind the scenes and be a part of that and watch. And it was really encouraging because it's something I don't witness in a lot of YouTubers. This, we're gonna take what works in business and apply it to what we do on YouTube. And you can just see the reason why they have the success that they do. And they're able to make enough money to pay employees, graphic designers, video editors, 
okay? Other creators, other channels. It's a business, but it's a, and, and so with gamers, I have to be careful. I know a lot of you watching aren't gamers, but with gamers, I have to be careful when I start talking about money and business because there's, gamers have this kind of, um, I don't mean this derogatorily, but there's this kind of hippie-esque uh, persona to them where making money and being a big business is evil and it's business is by no means evil. In fact, I'd argue that what the completionist does when you get to see how they operate behind the scenes, especially uh, the leader of their group, it is a moral business, at least from what I've been able to see, uh, and one that gives back in a way that's very important uh, and, and made me even want to support them in ways that I may not today. Because you're talking about a guy who pays himself less than he pays his employees. That's huge. Okay, not too many people who would do that and openly admit that they do that. But what I noticed about the completionist in that behind the scenes meeting is that they had strategy. I mean, they were having a meeting about here's what here was our strategic objective for this particular block of time. And we're going to come up short. Here's why we're going to come up short. And here's how we need to pivot. Because their strategy was laid and the whole team understood the strategy, he could have that conversation and everyone was nodding their head like, yep, that's cool. We weren't, we're not going to hit our goal. Our, our objectives for this particular strategy is not going to come through. But that's okay. Because I still think it's overall we're going to get a win and here's why. Strategy, strategy, strategy was built into what they were doing there. And I talked a little bit about strategy on our last video. But the reason... I wanted to dedicate a whole separate video to strategy is because I wasn't able to go into as much detail. So I said in that previous video, the strategy is a little more than choice. Okay, we did talk about this. It's about deciding where you're going to play. And I'm using the word play figuratively. And more importantly, where you're not going to play. So a perfect example of this strategy or of strategy is I always like to use Jack Welch in fact do I have his book here yeah I do here's another book I recommend very powerful guy very powerful book Jack Welch the former CEO of GE in fact the CEO of GE I was on a call uh, I was in a seminar with him not too long ago he's a really sharp guy too but anyway Jack Welch had he, he brought a he brought two principles that I thought were really interesting to the way GE operate operates and he said basically let's look at all of the sub business that we do let's look at everything GE is involved in subordinate companies that we own operations that we are involved in and are doing and Jack says if in any of these things that we're involved in we can't be number one or number two we're going to divest and we're going to talk about divesting here in a second in other words, we're going to cut it off, whether that means sell the company off or just stop doing it and reposition the people who are working there to help us in the other areas where we are winning. In other words, his, his, to make it more simple, he's like, if we're not winning and can't be the best, then we don't need to do it. Because the way the economy works best, especially an economy that's based on trade, us, is that each person does what they do best. That's what trade enables. If I'm great at raising cows, but I suck at growing vegetables. Why would I start growing vegetables when there's somebody down the street who does an excellent job, he's the best vegetable grower in the world, I'd be better off spending my time milking cows, giving him milk and getting vegetables in return. That way the economy thrives because we're both focused on what we do best and the economy, the other people in our system, in our village, in our community, benefit from the fact that we're doing what we do best and not wasting time on what we don't. Another reason why I start all the coaching with personality typing, because your personality is going to drive what you're good and not good at. I would make a horrible full-time accountant. That doesn't mean I can't do accounting. It doesn't mean that I don't understand finance. I have to understand those things to run a business. But believe me, I hire an accountant to help me because I don't do it excellently like he does okay I can do enough of it for he and I to have a conversation to make sure that our money's right 
but I hire him because why waste all my time trying to get mediocre at something when I can focus on what I'm really, really strong at, which is leading, coaching, having vision, and building companies, and let my accountant do what he does best, which is accounting. My personality type drives that. So it's about choice. I'm not going to be an accountant, okay? I am not going to be a buffoon prank channel. And I'm not using the word buffoon to be derogatory to anybody. I, I mean it kind of in its literal sense. A lot of what works on YouTube is silliness and it's things that I'm not interested in. And because I'm not interested in it, I would not be very good at creating it. Doesn't mean one day I may not own a channel that does it because I'm good at building businesses and helping people build strategies. But I'm not going to create it because I'm not the best at it. And I have zero interest in it which means I probably won't own any channels of duty. Like if, there, like, if there was a channel for Jackass, the movie, which there may be, I don't know. I'm not doing that. I'm not good at it. So I'm choosing not to get involved in what I'm not great at. Okay? And that's what strategy at its core is all about. It's deciding where are we going to stack all of our chips. And in the Academy, in the Ninja Academy, um, we talk about, the Genghis Khan method, where when you look at how Genghis Khan fought wars, he destroyed singular areas and just he took all his forces and just demolished one singular area. And then when he had fully demolished it, then he would branch out and go do something else. What I find with a lot of YouTubers is like, I want to make content for people who are 12 to 50 years old, men, women, and puppies. And it's like, you're, you're making content for everybody, so you're not making content for anybody. Because the content you'd have to make for a 12 year old would be vastly different from what you'd have to make to attract a 40 year old. Usually, that's probably not an, a, an absolute fact, but in most cases, like when I, my kids always want me to watch the YouTube channels they watch with them or some cartoon, and I'd rather gouge my eyes out because it's, it's just silliness and it's not entertaining to me at all. But it's entertaining to them. And if I wanted to make content that they would watch, I wouldn't, I'm not, my kids aren't sitting here watching this. Okay? So it's about choice, knowing where you're gonna play, knowing where you're not gonna play. And I think Jack Welch is one of the best when it comes to deciding, where are we number one or number two in that area? No, sir. Okay, can we become number one or number two? Or is the gap between us so huge that we just shouldn't bother? Sir, the gap's so big we shouldn't bother. Okay sell that company or just shut it down, shutter the doors and get all the people out of it and reapportion them throughout GE. Okay? That is in its simplest form the easiest way to explain strategy. It's just choice. Okay? And then we start talking about things like um the next thing you need to focus on once you figure out where you're going to play. So, how does that look on YouTube? Let's Let's make it applicable to what we're doing here. Well, it looks like this. What type of person are you? What do you like creating? What do you have a lot of passion? And not just passion, because you know people always say, you should just follow your heart and do what you love. If you love video games, you may find it surprising that when you start running a video game channel business, you don't love video games so much anymore. I went through that, where you're making so much video game content that you're missing out on just the simple joy of playing the game because I have to be so focused on, you know, when I was making gaming content regularly on Alloy 7, like there was a point where I was doing a review a week and you want to talk about that one week I had to finish The Witcher 3, then I had to finish Star Ocean 1, all games that I love, but God, having to go through them so quickly and then provide pages of writing to get the review ready, it, it becomes a job and it's like, it's not just about pursuing what you love. Sometimes it's about pursuing what you're actually good at, okay, or what you can be great at. And obviously you need to like it. I'm not telling you to pursue something that you hate just because you might be good at it. But the thing you absolutely love so much, you may find it strange that when you make it your, your work, you don't enjoy it so much anymore. So there's, all I'm saying there is, is that there is some balance. Okay, so in the YouTube space, it's really about choosing what drives you, what motivates you, what do you enjoy? And then as a creator, what do you enjoy creating? And then what are you good enough to create that other people would want to pay you to watch it? And I'm gonna put pay in air quotes because I'm not talking about money. 
I'm talking about currency. In other words, YouTube's not free. It doesn't cost you any money, but it does cost you time. Time that you could be spending somewhere else. So what am I good enough at that if I create it, people will take time away from something else they're doing to come pay attention to me? That's where you have to start thinking about making your choices as a creator. Okay, does that make sense? Let's see what the comments are talking about. Rico's Reef is here. What's up, brother? Dar Murray, yo, B. Hope you're having an awesome evening. I am. I hope you are too. Okay. So, choice. Choice, I mean, that's, that's you know, we could end the conversation there, but we won't. I, I like to give more value than I ever, like, the thing you're going to learn about me, especially those of you that get into my programs, and, and here's why I recommend you do. You're going to find that I give away in some cases, more value than I ever sell. Now, there are things in the paid programs that I share that are much higher level in depth because I don't have the time. Like some of the coaching we do behind the scenes, the people that pay to be there, is three to seven hours long, okay? there I have done coaching sessions that are seven hours worth of content, all right? But I like to give away so much that when it comes to spending money, it's like, yeah, I don't care. 50 bucks to get into a program, that's nothing compared to the hundreds of hours he spent here trying to help us, okay? So we could stop here. I don't want to because I want to help flesh this out, especially for those of you who are either getting started or maybe you're stuck, okay? We're gonna get you unstuck. We're gonna help you understand why you may be stuck. And we're gonna help you if you're just starting get over the hump of all your buddies are telling you to focus over here and all the other YouTubers that you're paying attention to are focused over here, not winning. Now, we will eventually focus on this stuff, but not now. You know, you can't start a war without a strategy that says, what is the purpose of this war? What are we trying to accomplish? Okay, we're trying to take out Osama bin Laden. Let's say, okay, great. That's the strategic objective. Then, how do we actually build plans and systems in place that support us getting to that ultimate end goal. In other words, the choice here is to put a give, you know, global terrorism a black eye by taking out this particular individual. How are we going to do it? Now let's build a plan for how we're going to do it. But if we just come over here and start, okay, on Thursday, we're going to board the helicopters and fly over here to Badabad. If you just start there, you're going to lose. All right? Target audience. How's that related to strategy? Well, going back to what I said a minute ago, where people will come to me and, and say, you know, I'm targeting 12 to 60 year old um, males, females, and puppies, uh, with, and I'm gonna make a cooking show and a gaming show, and I'm gonna have a show about spiritual endeavors and biblical studies, and yada, 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 and there's no target, you're just basically and I'm telling you, I've dealt with this. It's not just a YouTube thing. So don't be discouraged if that's you. I'm not calling out anybody or trying to criticize. This is something I've seen. You can't imagine some of the executives I have coached or counseled in my career who think this same way. Where it's, well, I just want my message to resonate with everyone. No, it's not going to. You can't, you know, you can't take a person like me and ask some figurehead person to come down and give me a speech to hype me up about something that I don't care about. You have to know your audience is the point. And the world is bad at this. All of it, business, you name it, people in general, dating, people are horrible at picking mates. Well, I just want every woman to like me. No, you don't. Believe me, you don't. It would be a nightmare if every woman liked you. Because one, you'd be forced, you'd be faced with the paradox of choice. It'd be very hard for you to choose. And two, if you attracted everybody, it means you've also attracted the people who are very bad fits for you, including the ones who are good fits for you, and it may be hard to sift through that. You'd rather attract the person who's your optimal mate. The same thing goes with a YouTube channel, is you're trying to make content that's pleasing and appeasing to everyone. And it's not going to be appeasing to anyone. Because nobody's going to feel when they watch it like, oh, that was made like when I watch Samurai Champloo, which is a 
animated Japanese show if you don't know what I'm talking about. When I saw Star Trek The Next Generation, when I saw The Matrix, when I saw Gladiator, I walked away from all those things saying those things were made with me in mind. It's a very selfish statement. It's not necessarily true, but it's figurative. It's those things resonate so powerfully with me. When Maximus is in the room with Caesar and Caesar tells him, Maximus, you are to be my successor. And he's silent and then sees it like, because this scene is the epitome of what I think a great leader is. And so in this scene, Caesar's like, well, don't you have anything to say, bro? I just told you you're going to inherit the kingdom. And Maximus responds, with all my heart, no. That to me, that is the characteristic of the most powerful leaders on the planet because they understand the weight of that type of responsibility and they don't run toward it with some foolish political ambition. They run away from it because it's not because it's hard, but because one mistake, one wrong thing, and you could destroy an entire nation, not a village, not a YouTube channel, a nation if you get it wrong. And Maximus is smart enough to know that he's dumb enough to F it up if he doesn't have the right counsel. That movie, that scene was made with me in mind. It resonated. That's why I can still, I can recite the actual script to you if you want. I can act it out. That's how powerful that was to me. You've got to figure out how to do the same type of storytelling. You've got to figure out who your content is for. Because Gladiator wasn't for everybody. I mean, it was a widely accepted and appreciated film, but it wasn't for everyone. Okay? Just like, you know, Samurai Champloo is a better example. A person who has studied a bit of Japanese history, especially that transition from feudal Japan to the more modern era and how the United States was involved and how that ties into World War II. And Samurai Champloo deals with all of these social, political, economic issues. And I'm very intrigued by that. Is it the most popular show on the planet? No. I don't know that, you know, more than a, maybe a handful, maybe a million people even know what it is. But it was made for, with me in mind. And I love it to this day. It has one of the best soundtracks. I love Nujabas. When I was a musician, I, one of my dreams was to work with him. May he rest in peace. I, I didn't get the chance to before he passed away. The point is, you have to know, you have to not just know, you have to determine who is your target audience? Who are you trying to reach? And for some people, that's tough. So I'd tell you where to start is start with yourself. What is what you like and what you're passionate about? And then be real honest and ask yourself, is what you're passionate about something a million other people can be passionate about? Because if your goal is a million subscribers, for example, I'd say you need at least 10 to 100 million people who are interested in whatever it is that you're doing to get you a million subscribers. Because not everyone's going to subscribe to you. Okay, Alloy 7, for example, I'm not delusional enough to think that one day this channel, if I just continue to do social media marketing coaching focused on YouTube, I'm not delusional enough to think that a million people are going to come watch this because it's very niche. First of all, these videos are very long. Most people on YouTube are not going to sit for two hours and listen to somebody talk, even if what I'm giving you is highly valuable. I know that. Okay, and it's very detailed. Humans like simplicity. Nietzsche once said, I'm going to paraphrase something, uh, Nietzsche may be what you know him by, I call him Nietzsche. He says, the more complicated a, a topic is, the harder you have to work to seduce people to pay attention to it. That's Alloy 7, that describes Alloy 7 very perfectly. I don't make it overly simple. Because frankly, the people I want to help aren't the ones just looking for little simple tips and tricks that are going to not help them succeed. I'm looking for the ninjas, that's why I call it the YouTube Ninja Academy. Who, and you're a part of that, by the way, even if you're not paying to be in the green belt, the blue belt, or the black belt, uh, or the VIP programs, you're still in this academy. You're still a ninja who's a part of it. So I know my target audience. I know my, it was funny too, because I had, when I started doing the strategy for Alloy 7, I had deduced that there's probably about 25,000 people total in the gaming space that I could possibly reach with this. And when the tools finally caught up to my thinking and I was able to actually do the market research, one of the things I teach the people how to do in the paid programs, like how to, where do you physically go to do the market research for free, by the way. And I looked up the number because it, when I first started doing market research, the tool didn't have it. It does now. And it was literally like 25,633. <laughs> and I was like, 
Dang, that wasn't too bad. And it wasn't a guess. Like, I didn't just sit down one day and just pull a number out of my, you know, hat. I did some hard looking at the numbers, what I was reaching and what I was doing and looking at other signals across the internet. And I was like, it's probably about 25,000 people. And it was almost spot on. And I have almost 12,000. Like, I have half of that audience. That's huge. 50% of a, of a total audience if you could do 50% of an audience that's bigger than 25,000, let's and let's say, you know, your target audience is is 20 million people. If you did half of that, that's 10 million people. Think about that. Okay? So you got to be able to determine who your content is for and it has to be specific enough such that you can actually build a viable strategy and set goals and set objectives that are smart. Okay? So, you know, measurable, actionable, um, R and T, I always forget what the acronym means, but basically things that you can measure, you need to have objectives that you can observe, measure, and evaluate to see if you're on task. All right, I did this out of order, so we're gonna skip number three and go straight to number four, market research. That's exactly what we're just talking about. So once you've done, I know where I'm gonna play, and I know where I'm not gonna play, and you need to identify that. Okay, if you're a musician, where are you not, what audience are you not gonna try to reach? It's usually pretty easy because the genre you're playing is the audience you're trying to reach, but let's say you're a heavy metal artist. Speci get more specific than heavy metal. Like, are you a thrash, are you a thrash band? Are you death metal? You know, are you core? Where you mix uh, punk music and heavy metal together? It, what are you doing? Specifically, I think there's what, 19 subgenres of metal from my days of being a musician. But the point is, once you've decided where you're gonna play, where you're not gonna play, once you've figured out who your target audience is, then you need to do some research about this audience. You need to know everything you can possibly know about this audience, why? Because if you ever want them to watch you, you're gonna know, you're gonna have to know what they need and what they desperately want. And desperately want is going to be more important than need. Why? The same reason more people eat McDonald's than eat natural vegetables. Because they desperately want food that tastes good and makes them feel full. But they need the nutrients and the fiber and the minerals and the vitamins that come from vegetables. But typically they will only go eat those vegetables when their life depends on it. But they'll eat McDonald's because of the pleasure that it brings. That's, you have to have that McDonald's mentality in the YouTube space. That's something that was very hard for me to accept because I'm not a fast food McDonald's try to make, you know, entertaining content just for the sake of entertainment. Like I always want there to be an underlying purpose to what I share that's impacting lives in a positive way and not just making people laugh. Like I watch the, I talk about watching the Jackass movies and they just, they don't make me angry. They just make me incredibly bored. Because there's literally no purpose to the foolishness. And that's okay. Like, if you dig it, I'm not criticizing it. I'm just giving you an idea of how my mind works. But you got to know, what do your people desperately want? Because if you can figure that out, you figure out who you're doing it for and what they desperately want, then you can do that three-legged stool that I told you about. The right product for the right people at the right time. And you can hit, and that's how, what I was talking about with my, my personal channel where I do my coaching. When I went from zero to 400 subscribers, excuse me, uh, seemingly overnight. Granted, the channel has been around for like five or six months, but I wasn't uploading regular content. And the content that's got me all the subscribers, I just started uploading like three weeks ago. So, I knew the audience. I knew, and it, it took time. Like, I refined it. Like, your strategy, so to encourage you, just so that this doesn't get overwhelming, your strategy is not going to be perfect the first time you do it. Okay? And in the academy, and the paid programs, I actually, I physically walk you through how to do each of these. Okay? Like, how to determine what, who are the people, and how do you narrow it down? Like, I walk you through that. Okay? I don't just leave you out in the dark. It's too detailed to get into here. Otherwise, we'll have a seven-hour coaching session. And I don't want to do that. But the point is, I knew my people. I knew what they wanted desperately. And timing. It, and, and what I'm doing is timeless. So that's a win for me. It, what I'm doing will always be popular. And that's a blessing for me because now I don't have to 
chase YouTube trends. I hate doing that crap. Like, let's find out what's trending this week. Oh, Tim Tebow. Like, I made a Tim Tebow video because he was trending. That's so exhausting. Having to chase trends that I don't have any interest in and having to kind of play up to people's, well, the world wants to talk about Tim Tebow, so I better talk about him. No, I don't want to do that. I'd rather talk about timeless things that people desperately want. And if I can figure out what those things are, then I can build a channel that goes from zero to 400, and hopefully I'll reach my goal of 1,000 here very quickly. Because my next goal then is 10,000, and then 100,000, okay? Then my next goal from there will be a million. But look, listen to what I'm talking about. Like, my goal isn't a million subscribers. Not right now. That's foolish to think that a, one or a handful of good videos, just, oh, a million subscribers, it doesn't work like that. You have to put in the time and the effort over time and people to build that trust that you're going to continue to give them something that's valuable to them. So right now I'm just focused on a thousand. And when I first started, I was only focused on a hundred. You know, as a person who's built bigger channels than that, I knew better. I was like, let's just get to the first hundred. Let's get to the threshold that allows me to change the name of my YouTube channel. And it was cool because it, it took a while to get there. But then I started making this other series and then brrr, it jumped up. Which brings us to the next piece. That's a great segue into your value statement, or you may have heard it called the value proposition. So when you know where you're going to play, you know who you're playing for, your target audience, and you've researched everything you possibly can about that group of people. Now, how do you communicate that you have what they want in your videos, in your storytelling? Everyone needs to learn how to be good storytellers. Okay, One of the reasons why the compelling artists that you follow are compelling is because they tell great stories. Okay? Even if the story is just you following their vlog and their life, it's a story. Humans are wired to pay attention to stories. It's how we've passed down information for millennia. So how do you communicate that I have what you need, I have what you want, here it is. And it's by, once you can determine what that value statement is, and for us, like we call it the one sentence YouTube destiny in the academy. What's your one sentence thing that you do for people? But in order to get to that one sentence thing, you got to know where you're playing. You got to know who you're playing for. And you have to know a lot about those people before you can ever tell them, here's something that's valuable to you. Okay? Then, investing. This isn't about the stock market. Okay? This is about once you know where you're playing, once you know who your target audience is, once you've done all the market research you can possibly do to understand your audience as well as you can, it won't ever be perfect. And you've, you've developed your value statement, your value proposition, what it is you offer them in exchange for their time and their attention, subscribers, their money, whatever, whatever currency it is that you're going for. Now it's time to put in the investment of time and energy into your creation. What are you going to invest in? Okay, for those of you who, and, and for new people, you can kind of stop there because you don't have anything to divest from because you're not creating anything yet um, but for some of you vets now it's time to focus on now that I know all these things where am I going to invest the bulk of my time and so when I first started you know alloy 7 I was all over the map and then I finally just got to the point where when I sat down to do the next year of strategy when I sat down I was like okay what is going to be um my product strategy for this year or this cycle and I looked at okay what are all the things I'm involved in and I mapped it out on paper actually I hand wrote it um, and then I later you know typed it up or whatever I was like okay I'm doing gaming reviews I'm doing live streams I'm doing coaching um, I'm doing you know chit chat videos or whatever about gaming whatever the case may be and then I sat back and was like okay Jack Welch, where can I be number one? Well, I was already number one in coaching gamers, right? So <clears throat> I couldn't be number one in Let's Plays, not with Alloy 7, because the, most of the people that are with, like I would have to completely alienate over 60% of the people subscribed to the channel to do that. I wasn't going to be number one in live streams. Frankly, YouTube and live streaming isn't all that wonderful. Um, in terms of, from my perspective, building the type of community that I wanted to build. 
the things I understand about live streaming as a gamer now that I didn't have when I first started, when I first started doing my research and experimentation. Now that I understand what it's for and what people are looking for, I realize, ah, live streaming isn't really where I need to play. Gaming reviews. Uh, return on investment on gaming reviews isn't that great, and I don't mean money or subscribers. What I mean is I always built reviews to be a discussion, to be an open forum for us to discuss our opinions. And what it usually turned into was 50% of the people singing my praises and then 50% of the people calling me racist and sexist names because they disagree with my opinion. And, you know, we live on a planet where if you disagree with somebody, they're so insecure that they have to attack you. So the return on investment for the reviews just wasn't there. Even though people, you know, the people who like the reviews really, really like them. When I looked at Alloy 7's numbers, I was like, I can't be number one in any of these. Like, Angry Joe is number one in reviews. It's just the way it's going to be, numbers-wise. Okay, and it's not, being number one isn't necessarily just about raw numbers. I don't want to give you that impression, but just flow with me here for the sake of the example. I don't, I, I knew I didn't need to keep doing Let's Plays on the channel because no one's here for that. No one's here really for the live streams anymore. Reviews, I do get a lot of viewership on some of them, but then the games I really, really want to review, nobody's really going to watch on this channel. And it would take a long time for SEO to bring in video search engine optimization for those of you that are new and don't know what that is. So it was just like, I'm going to divest in all of that and just coach. And I'll start another channel kind of as a hobby to do gaming because I still enjoy it, but I'm not, you know, necessarily trying to build my life's income on a gaming channel. Not to say that you can or shouldn't, it just wasn't where I was at. Uh, and so that was my my version of doing what Jack Welch did, and that's called divesting. Okay, every year, you know, uh, I think it's either Charlie Munger or um, Warren Buffett and their business partners. They say every year you should cut at least one thing that you're doing. So for me, it was gaming, at least from Alloy Seven's perspective, had to go. Just sometimes you got to know that it isn't working, and you just you cut it and you move on. Uh, not always easy, but it, and it takes a lot of courage to be able to divest that way. But if you know something else is working, I do a live stream for this type of coaching, and I immediately can bring out anywhere from 30 to 200 people, depending on the night I do it, depending on what the topic is, depending on who got the email when I send it out. I do a live stream for any video game. I might be lucky to get 7 to 18 people. You know, writing is on the wall. Like, I'm not going to be number one as a live streamer. And I knew once I figured out what live streaming was all about from a gaming perspective, because I paid attention to the engagement I was getting from the audience, I was like, oh, that's why people watch live streaming. I was like, nah, this isn't for me. I don't need to do live streaming. It doesn't need to be a part of my, my operation. Because what, you know, again, going back to knowing your audience and knowing everything about them, what the viewer wants in a live stream versus what I wanted to create were not in sync. So it's foolish for me to continue making live streams the way I want to make them when nobody wants to watch them for that. Uh, and if you want kind of some insight into that, go to Twitch and look up the games that are trending. Let's take some comments here. Um, so Ryden says, I got to bounce guys. We'll recap on the video tomorrow. Really need to sleep. Been working all day. Okay. See you later, my friend. Be safe out there. So Ryan says, I don't think subs is a good measurement of channel success, to be honest. 83% of my views. Yeah, I, that's 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 typical for a lot of channels. So Go ahead. I'm, I'm looking at the comments here. Hey, iFlames is here. It doesn't look like any specific questions have come across. Just um, folks, you know, chatting it up with me, which is good. That's good. I like the participation. That's awesome. So, okay. Gil, great, great comment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this comment and respond to it. Uh, Super Ohio Bro says, so is this the last live stream complete? No, no, I'm sorry. Let me be specific. 
gaming live streams. Gaming live streams are done. Not this is this is us. This is this is gonna stay. Okay. When I was talking about cutting the live streams, I'm talking about gaming. I'm not gaming on Alloy 7 anymore. So don't worry about these live streams. I prefer doing this to pre-recording 100 times out of 100. I'd rather come do a live show than do a pre-recorded show. 100, literally. I, I would never do another pre-recorded show if I thought people on YouTube had better attention spans and could actually sit down for two hours. Um, you know, but on other channels, I have to make a little bit shorter form content and have a good mix in there just because the way YouTube works. But trust me, if I could do live shows every time, I'd do live shows every time. On Alloy 7, I can do live shows every time because I've built an audience that will allow me to do it. On my smaller channels, I can't really do that yet. All right, now, I want to take this comment from Deadly Psycho. It says, so he basically, I'm going to paraphrase, he spent a lot of time building dope channel art and a dope logo and and by his definition he's not very successful um so he finds this information useful but he says uh, i won't lie though it really hurts um that all the work i've done in the tactic side is pointless sort of so it's not pointless at all it's not pointless the stuff that's over here isn't pointless it just can't be the number one priority in other words, you having a dope logo and you having dope channel art is a good thing. But it's so not as important as getting this. So if you had to choose between having a crappy logo and crappy artwork and getting all of this, and trust me, there's a lot more to strategy than just what I have here. The main takeaway here is the choice. But if you got all of this right and screwed up everything over here, you'd still get success. It may take you longer, okay? It may take you longer, because remember, strategy without tactics is the longest route to victory, to winning. So if you get all of this right and all of this wrong, you're still gonna win, it's just gonna take forever. But if you get all of this right and all of this wrong, you're gonna lose. So it's not that it's not important, it's just that most creators, 99% of creators I work with, care more about this stuff than they do this stuff. And the only reason, it's not because they're unintelligent, it's not because there, it's not because you're not smart. It's because nobody teaches you this. Have you ever seen this discussion happen in school? Has anybody sat you down, for those of you who aren't in college or in the professional world yet, and says, when it comes to your life, you have to have a strategy for what you want to do. And in order to understand your strategy, first, you have to understand yourself. And you have to decide where you're going to play based on your personal, psychological, and biological strengths. If you're six foot seven, 215 pounds, and can jump out of the gym, there's a good chance that playing basketball is a good strategy for you, okay? If you're six foot two and you have the wingspan of Michael Jordan, who's six foot six, and you can barely jump all that high, but your jump shot sucks and you can't dribble, basketball probably not the greatest idea in the world. No one sits you down and does that. All they tell you, and this is one of the reasons why I coach, to be honest with you, is all your mentors and your people tell you, not because they're bad people, because they're ill-informed, is you can be anything you want to be. And you can, you can go on YouTube and just have a great dream and be positive and you'll be successful in a couple of years. It doesn't work. And nobody sits you down and tells you this, which by the way, none of this is complicated. It's just not easy. And so this stuff, all this stuff over here is easy. It's easier to focus on because it takes less energy. It takes less Brain power, not intelligence, actual brain power and focus. You have to sit in a quiet room and think, especially for my extroverts, this is hard. Because you have to sit still and not work in order to give you time to let this gestate. But nobody in your schools, not many of your mentors, if you're, if you're like most people, I'm fortunate that I've had people in my life to show me these things. They're not going to show you this. And that's one of the reasons why I do it, is because... You know, everyone would be way more successful if you were getting this information when you were young. Okay? If by the time, like me and my son and I have these conversations. And he's not even 10 years old. So, if I were, if I could go back in time to being 5 years old and someone would have sat me down and said, Look, the way your life is going to go is like this. You have to make choices about what's going to work for you. And the best choices you can make are going to be related to, one, you know, for me, your spiritual beliefs your biology and your psychology. I'm not built to be a professional basketball player, okay? 
Arguably, I could have been built to be a professional football player, but I lacked some of the talent and I lacked some of the work ethic. That was one of my dreams, okay? So cross that off the list. You know, so my psychology and what was I raised around? What have I been around my whole life? Leaders, okay, well, you're probably going to be, have a natural propensity to be good at leadership because you've, not because you're great, but because I have seen good leadership modeled in front of me all throughout my childhood before I was ever an adult. I was coaching people, literally. I was a coach before I graduated. Matter of fact, I was a coach when I was in high school. I was coaching other people. That's why I say I've been coaching. That's how I can say I've been coaching for over 20 years because I'm not an old guy, okay? Because I've been doing it since I was in my young teens. And actually younger than that when I think about it. Um, I've been doing it. And it's because people sat me down and helped me figure out you know, what value can I personally add to the world based on the skills that I bring to the table? All right. And then I can go find an audience who want something that I am capable to provide. I can learn everything I need to learn about them and then provide them with something that's ultimately valuable to them such that they would want to pay me of their money or of their time, of their attention. If it's my wife, of her affection, of her support. Remember, it, paying is not just about money. Money is the last thing that we talk about when we're doing this stuff because you get all this right. Like I always tell people, money is not the purpose of a business. It's the result of doing good business. The reason why you see these multi-billion dollar companies and you know the media and people that don't know what they're talking about tell you, well, it's because they're evil and they're just robbing people. Wrong. It, nine time, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you don't get to be in the billions of dollars by just doing a bunch of people wrong. Now, you may have done people wrong in the scope of your whole existence, but to get to a billion dollars, you probably did a lot of right at some point. Even if you are naturally not a great person, you did something that was valuable for someone else. Sure, you could find exceptions to the rule, but not very many. And so that's why I do what I do is because nobody... And the YouTube space is really getting into this like this and helping you understand that you're spending all your time over here and then you're wondering, why do I only have 60 subs after a year? It's not a criticism. The reason why is because you live here and you haven't done any of this because no one showed you, no one first told you that you had to. You watched a bunch of other YouTubers who are moderately successful and you're like, well, that's what they do. Let me just copy what they do, and it should work for me, and it doesn't. You know, people think that PewDiePie just, you know, is just cranking out videos and videos and videos. No, he even tells you, if you pay attention to PewDiePie, he tells you what actually started to skyrocket his success. And when he figured out that that's what's happening, he went hardcore on it. And now PewDiePie can do whatever he wants because he focused on his choice, his audience, researched what they want, his value, you know, is, is bringing fun, you know, and then investing and divesting. So that at its core, my friends, remember, strategy is choice. It's all it is. We don't need to make it hard. It's not complicated, but it's also not easy. All right. Remember that. Now, So there, uh, Weinburn is asking for the next live stream. It's usually at once every week, uh, typically on the weekends, on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Sometimes I do two a week. Probably won't do that this week because I've got some other stuff that I need to really, really focus on. Uh, for the Ninja Academy, I've got some stuff that I need to film uh, for the paid areas. So let's do this. Everyone that's still here and hasn't fallen asleep on me... Um, Let's see. So yeah, I, I never know exactly what day I'm going to do it on because, you know, for example, next weekend I'll be taking my kids to a football game at the high school where I played uh, many, many years ago. So I'm probably not going to do it on a Friday, which on some weekends I would do it on a Friday. You know, so I'm going basically to visit my Padres, you know, back where I'm from. And, uh, so it just depends on what's going on for the week. But usually it's Friday, Saturday, or Sunday night. I don't typically do them during the week because I have a lot of other, especially right now I'm working to build some other programs that aren't uh, Alloy 7 related. And they're taking up a very large portion of my time during the week. Um, so yeah, 
That's the, just stay tuned. And by the way, Weinberg, you're on the mailing list. I think you said you joined the mailing list. I send out emails when I'm going to broadcast. So if nothing else, you'll get an email with a link that says, hey, I'm live. Click here and come watch the show. So just if, if you can't be bothered to remember what day it is, just watch your email box. So here's what we want to do. I'm pretty much done with the core content here. Go ahead and get your questions in the comment section below so I can answer them and we can adjourn. I'm also going to talk to you briefly about how you can get even more value out of what I do. Hopefully you guys had a chance to either write this down or whatever, but if you didn't, you can always just wait for the upload to process and then you can screenshot it and use it at your house on your YouTube channels. Things of that nature. I think I'll probably leave this quote up here because I think it's powerful. You're going to hear that Sun Tzu made this quote. He didn't. He's just the one who was attributed. I, I can't find any doc. And they say it's in the Art of War. It's not. I've ripped that book apart. This quote is not in the Art of War. So here's how we can add some more value to your life, to your YouTube channel. Remember, even if you're not a gamer, the book is titled for gamers because when I started doing coaching, I targeted, going back to target audience, I focused very heavily on gamers. But believe me, the principles that are in my book will apply to whatever YouTube channel you're running. So right now, if you look in the description of this video, you'll see a link, the same one I'm writing on the board right now. Okay? And you can go ahead and start writing your questions. I'm just going to keep talking while you do, and then I'll answer. If you go to allaway7.tv slash ebook, again, link in the description below. You can join our mailing list, and by doing so, you will get a copy of my YouTube Survival Guide ebook completely for free. Okay, you don't have to pay a dime. It typically sells for 20 bucks on my website. It's 25 over on Amazon. Um, but you can just join the mailing list and get it completely for free. But so why join a mailing list? Well, because the mailing list allows me to send out things that I don't do on video. For example, right before this uh, live, live coaching call, uh, I sent out an email about how I went from zero to 400 subscribers in a little under a month. And there's some, there's some nuance to that because the channel is older than a month, but I was doing active uploading for a little bit, maybe more or less than a month, give or take. And I did, you know, I've been able to get my subscribers to skyrocket. And I explained in that email how I did it using a lot of the principles that we talked about tonight, but I went into more detail. Uh, I also, earlier in the week, so in the paid area, the YouTube Gamers Academy, and I'll, I'll put that up here too. In the Academy, earlier in the, or last week, and so it's going to be Ninja dash academy again link in the description if you're interested so last week i posted i made a post in our private facebook group that we use to communicate with the ninjas that are in the paid portion of the academy i did a you i did a facebook posting talking about how to use analytics and paying attention to the story your analytics are telling you about your channel such that you can invest and divest the way that we talked about tonight. Invest and double down in the things that are working and divest away from the things that are not. Uh, and so I posted that in the private Facebook group and I was, I was sitting there thinking earlier this week, I was like, you know, the people on my mailing list would probably benefit from this information. So I just sent it out to the mailing list. You know, it was totally something that I gave to the folks that paid to be in my programs. But remember, I like to give away information too, because one, I understand, uh, I know what it's like to be broke, Believe me, I know what it's like to have to call your older brother many, many years ago because you spent more money than you had and you can't pay your rent. I've been that dude. I had to call my brother and say, please wire me $600 so I don't have to be homeless this month. Okay? I've been there. So I know what it's like when you want to have access to something, you just don't have the funds to do it. That's why I do a lot of free coaching. All right? And I do hours and hours and hours of free coaching for that reason. So I figured this information is really good information. I'm just going to send it out to the mailing list of people, which is a mixture of people who pay and who don't pay. It's like, I don't care. Boom. 
Here's the information. Here's what you need to think about when you're building your channel. So the reason why you want to be on the mailing list is not just to get the free ebook. The ebook will certainly help you with a lot of what we talked about tonight in terms of strategy. It's going to pull you away from burning yourself out, throwing video after video after video at the platform and actually get you to pull back and look at the situation strategically and understand what is the best way for me to move toward whatever my big picture goal is. What is the strategy? The book's going to help you do that. It's going to help you do a lot more too. Uh, so you get the free book, but then you'll also get the things that I send out that I don't make videos for. I have not made a video for that Facebook posting. Now, in our videos in the paid section, we do talk about how to, how to use your analytics, but this post was very specific about something that I had experienced. So I sent that out to the group. It was like, I think those of you who are not in the paid program would still benefit from this discussion. All right. So that's why you want to be on the mailing list. As far as the academy goes, a couple of things to consider. So we have, uh, matter of fact, maybe I should do it this way. We have the green belt. Program. We have the blue belt. And this is going to get really cool here in a second. <laughs> Talking about giving away stuff for free. And the black belt. All right. And then we have a VIP section as well, which is a little bit different than the programs there. All right. So our, we have a green belt program, which is basically the fundamental things I need you to understand about how YouTube works how search engines work, and how do you actually build a strategy that can take advantage of just how the YouTube platform works to help you build a channel that's ultimately valuable. So this is a very technical instruction manual. All right, I would argue that when I first built the Academy, this is what it was all built around. Uh, and when I was first gonna launch it, I was gonna launch it for $9.97. Uh, because that's what a lot of my mentors, like programs that I pay to be in, I, I, there's programs where I pay $70 a month. There's programs that I pay uh, $100 to $300 a month. There's programs that I've paid $9.97 for. When it was all said and done, um, I didn't launch it for that much because I knew the bulk of my audience were gamers. And when you understand, going back to the market research, when you understand how gamers are, they don't necessarily have $1,000 to throw at a program. So I said, okay, how can I make this extremely valuable and not charge everyone a huge amount of money to get access to it? Because they're not going to have it. If I make it $9.97, no gamer is going to be able to afford it. So I was like, all right, as the introductory program, we'll just make it this. And this is what the price still is today. So that one starts at $47, a huge, drastic drop. I understand. It's the way it is. I just... I would love to be able to charge that much for it because I think that's what it's worth, but I just don't think enough, I, I don't think people would be able to take advantage of it because they don't necessarily have 997 laying around, not this particular audience. Okay, so that was kind of my way of attempting to show some empathy for the people I knew who consumed my stuff. Because a lot of the people you know, that I've worked with for years have told me, I, I, I don't even have the money to get your book, bro. Okay, and I'm like, okay, how can I make it fair? Now, and there are extreme cases, but what I find with a lot of folks when it comes to like the book and stuff, it's not that they don't have money because the same person that'll tell me, and not always, because there are some really extreme cases where even when I was selling the book, I gave it away for free because I knew the person's life situation. And I was like, nope, you can have it for free. Please enjoy. Um, and because I'm not, I'm not in it for the money, but... <clears throat> I also get some people that tell me they don't have any money and then I'll see them post, oh yeah, I have an Xbox One, a PlayStation 4, a $1,600 PC. Like, it's not that they don't have any money, it's that they don't have their priorities straight. So they're not willing to invest in themselves in what's going to help them be better more than they're willing to invest in entertaining themselves. And one of my coaches uh, taught me something very profound. And he's like, never agree to work with people who are cheap about their self-development. Anyway. Moving forward, we have the Blue Belt program, which gets into a lot more of the higher level teaching. About So we had questions in here tonight about how can I be more compelling? I think that's actually the first lesson. 
You know, in the Blue Belt program, we get into the personality testing. And based on your personality type, what's the best type of content that you should think about making because of the way that you're wired? Okay, and that video is even more of a discussion than it just is me dictating it to you because everybody's a little bit different. But then I tell you, what are the principles of being compelling? Okay, not my wisdom, wisdom that came from people that wrote books like Compelling People by uh, John Neffinger and Matthew Kohu. All right, so we talk about things that come from there and what it means to be compelling and why certain things are compelling. Uh, and then we get into more of the strategic, we get a lot more depth in the, st the strategy conversation that we were having tonight. And long story short, the cool thing is, oh, wrong color. The Blue Belt program typically um, goes for $197, right? But the cool thing is if you use the link that I'm giving you tonight, and I'm, I'm not going to broadcast this like, <laughs> I mean, I guess I am broadcasting because it's on YouTube, so anybody watching this is going to be able to take advantage of it, and that's fine. Uh, if you were to do it tonight, you'd get the Green Belt program first, and then it's going to ask you if you want the Blue Belt program. It's going to give it to you for $100 less. So if you were to do this tonight, you'd actually get into the Blue Belt program um, $100 cheaper than you would if you just bought the Blue Belt program. All right? So if you, if you, go, through the, if you go through the process that's on this website, it'll walk you through it. You'll pay $47 and then $97 instead of... 47 and then 197 and then the black belt program here's the hilarious part and you could totally take advantage of me by the way <laughs> here's the hilarious part about the black belt program i haven't set it up yet there are videos in the black belt instructional i haven't uploaded a ton of them yet i think right now in the system there's only one but if you're in the blue belt program because i haven't built the product yet in the you know the online system that i use it's going to give you access to the black belt. And if you do that, it's not like I'm going to take it away from you when I'm finished building it. So if you were to do these two things tonight, you're automatically going to be put into the black belt program because of my, how behind I am at building out, not the content, but at building out the system because I just built this entirely new system. And so you're basically not going to pay anything to get in the black belt. And then going forward in November, I think I'm, I'm, my plan is to leave the green belt where it is, but we're going to raise the price of the blue belt to $4.97. Uh, and then the black belt, I haven't decided what I want to raise that to yet because I still want to make sure that I am infusing. Like I have a lot more content that we're building right now that's not in there yet. And I want to make sure that's in there before I tell people it's this high dollar ticket item. And then the VIP program is something that if you want to be a V so what the VIP program basically gives you access to is monthly calls just like this one where it's just us it's you me and nine other people from the Academy and we rotate uh, with different VIPs I come on once a month and we do a live actual conversation not where I'm filming on YouTube but we're in a place where you can physically ask me questions uh, or virtually ask me questions and get them answered live and in living color right there and so we do for our vips we do that once a month and then that's i think it's 24.95 per month if you want to be a vip you just need to contact me because i don't let everybody into that because i want very specific types of ninjas to be involved in that because first there's a monthly fee so i want to make sure that i know i'm giving value but i want to make sure we're bringing valuable people into it because there's only 10 slots every month and I don't want it to fill up with a bunch of people who are lazy, aren't willing to work, or aren't willing to put in the time necessary to develop the skills to understand and implement these principles. All right, so free ebook. This is what the people ask me about the programs. That's why I wanted to put it up there. So if you do all of this tonight, <laughs> you will be forever, here's the cool part, you will be forever a black belt member just because you joined the blue belt, because I haven't built the black belt product yet. So I take a loss, but my loss is your gain. And I'm totally cool with that because I don't think business is about making money. It's about serving people. So let's see what questions we have here so we can adjourn. All right.
So Restoring Heroes Project, have you done research on the Bible study videos? Be more specific. What do you mean, have I done research about them? Deadly Psycho says, so you suggest divesting in something you like doing because it isn't picking up? Not necessarily. That's a great question. Not necessarily. You've got to, because it's not picking up, is very broad in general. You need to understand. So before you divest, remember divest doesn't mean you don't divest just because it's not winning today. Divesting is because you've realized that it's not going to win in the future because you've done your homework. Okay? You've literally sat down, you understand your audience, you understand your you understand your target audience, you've done all the market research, and beyond any shadow of a doubt, you know, you could possibly be wrong, but you're pretty sure that no matter what you do, this isn't going to work in the future. And you you can't be the best at it or one of the best at it, then you divest. Just because it's not working doesn't mean you necessarily divest. I'll give you an example. PayPal. That was uh, Elon Musk, who's now, you know, the founder of SpaceX and Tesla. Uh, he was also one of the guys that started PayPal. They spent, hear me now, they spent... 100 they burned through 180 million dollars in investor capital before they made a single penny on PayPal think about that for a second 180 million dollars was invested before they ever made a return most people will divest after they make three videos and nobody watches it. So it's not just because it's not picking up. You've got to do the legwork to really, like Elon Musk and, and, the, and the crew knew, we've got to make some adjustments because this is going to work. The world needs an online way to spend money that's easier than having to put in credit cards and, and it has more flexibility. They had a vision that they knew would work. It just, it was going to take time for it to catch on. In your case, what you need to be able to do is evaluate whatever it is that you're investing in. Is it valuable? Is it congruent with what your audience desperately wants? And can you make some tweaks to it so that it will pick up? And if the answer to all three of those is no, and you're pretty sure that no matter how much effort, energy, and time you put into this thing, it's just not going to catch on, then you maybe divest. You know, like on Alloy 7, I had videos that picked up for example, um, my Fallout 4 video, which still hasn't done amazing, but the decent numbers that it did do for a channel as small as mine, it took a long time for it to kick in. So that you, you gotta, you gotta, it's not just, oh, this isn't picking up right now. It's how long has it been failing? Figure out why is it failing? You have to know why. Why is this not working? What do I need to tweak? What is it about YouTube? What is it about my audience? What is it about my delivery that's not working? And if I adjust any of those things, will it work? And then you experiment. You make the adjustments and see if it works. And if it picks up, then you have your answer. If after 90 days you've made all the tweaks you know to make and you've done your evaluation and your homework and it's not working, then you die best. Great question. What else we got? What's the best way to learn what people want versus what they say they want? I've had some say do more of X content, but it doesn't get the attention. So it's not just about, I mean, audience engagement and talking to your viewers is very important. It's something that I take very seriously. I can't respond to as many comments as I used to when I first started the channel because I'm very busy. There was a time when I responded literally to every comment, even the people that used to leave me horrible ones. Um, but you, you've got to, so I know you're in the academy and I've shown you how to do market research with the different tools that we use. That's, you, you wanna spend some time understanding and, and the websites that I've shown you guys. In the next live VIP call, I'm gonna be showing you guys another website that you need to be using on a regular basis. Um, and you gotta be able to use the tools that are available to you online to basically plug in. If, if my audience are people looking for career counseling, then I'm putting that into the marketing tools that we're using and figuring out, okay, what is it that these people are interested in? And, and some of the tools, you know, I'm not trying to be cryptic. One of the tools is freaking Google, okay? And you're doing your searches through Google and figuring out and going to different blogs and websites, subscribing to their mailing lists and reading 
what they're doing. You have to become a highly unselfish person to understand what other people want because it requires you to go spend time where they spend time. Figure out where they hang out on Reddit. Some of the videos that I've created here are simply because I went to the Reddit channels where YouTubers hang out. I just asked them, what kind of problems are you guys having? And they will tell you. They're happy. Oh, word. I'm ready to talk about that. And then they go in. And so then I have tons of content to make videos on because I know where people are struggling. All right, so that's, that's just two examples of a way that you really need to spend time with your target audience and understand where, where their desires are, where their frustrations are as well, so you can address them. So, yeah, no, restoring heroes. I know you're talking about the Bible studies that I'm doing, but what, what research? You, your question was, have I done research on the Bible study videos? Uh, did I mention that I was doing some kind of background? I, I guess the simple answer to your question is, Biblical, online, biblical content online is not necessarily an easy sell, uh, especially in video form when you're not a well-known personality, okay? So really, the research is just me going back and looking at my numbers, looking at my analytics, and looking at the blogs I've written, looking at the videos that I've created, and understanding that all my targeting was right, all of you know the audience I was trying to reach was right, but it still didn't do the numbers that I wanted it to do. And so what I concluded by looking at other people's videos was this just isn't something people are really looking for on YouTube. It, it doesn't have, when you look at the most popular videos, unless they're, you know, the latest person talking about Joel Olstein being a Satanist or some other nonsense, like that type of sensational content does really well on YouTube. I'm not doing that crap. I, I'm not going to disparage another human being just to get views like the, the very practical straightforward hey here's something that may help your life a little bit if you give this a read it's it's a harder sell on YouTube than the surprising shocking oh my goodness Joel Osteen said he would go to a gay guy's wedding he's just like it, it and that that is a video I'm not making that up or trying to be um, critical of people's different faiths or belief systems or sexual preferences that's actually a video online. Like I was shocked that it was a video that people took time to make. But I'm not making that crap. I, I refuse to make sensationalized content just for the purpose of manipulating people's biology and psychology so I can put money in my pocket. And I've just found that unless you, know, you are a person of renown when it comes to biblical content, building a channel based on it is a very hard uphill battle, at least from what I've seen in the short time that I've been doing it. Uh, but time will tell. Part of the research is waiting f uh, months to years to figure out if the stuff I put on YouTube, because you gotta remember, some stuff doesn't catch on right away, but it eventually does. So if a year from now, you know, the 40 or so videos I made catch on and start getting tons of views, then I would consider revisiting it. But when those videos sit stagnant, even though the SEO is good, the targeting is good, the topics are good, um, it's just not, it's not worth my time to continue investing in that because the, thing, the other things that I'm investing in are giving people greater value, at least for now. And you know, a lot of the biblical coaching that I do, I do in person with the humans who I'm around. So you know, that's much more valuable than me because even they aren't watching my YouTube channel, they're getting with me in person and we're able to actually, cause one of the things that's hard about biblical study is a lot of it warrants a conversation, not just a one way, here's my thoughts, now go away. Biblical conversation usually works a lot better when it can be a discussion, not just a static video. All right, Deadly Psycho says, how do you feel about TubeBuddy? I think it's great. I use it. Let's see. Deadly Cycle says, do you suggest implementing social media into growing your YouTube? I've had little success with it, and I feel it gets me out into the public through... Okay, so here's the deal with, you know, being on Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and whatever 50 million other platforms are out there. Here's the bottom line, and this is straight from one of my other coaches. I'm going to totally bite what he taught me.
most people are going on social media, you're, you're trying to quote unquote, to use words that people usually use when they come to me, to promote their work. And one of the main places they go to quote unquote promote their work is Twitter. And nothing could be a worse idea. <laughs> Twitter is a news feed and it's people are following personalities, businesses, and information outlets that they want information from. So if you're trying to get viewers from Twitter, there are ways that you could do it, but if you're not making content that a good amount of people want to see that meets all the criteria for virality, um, you know, does it have some social currency to it? Is it shocking and surprising? Does it make people laugh? Uh, you know, and you don't already have a following, it's going to be kind of hard to use Twitter to do that. Reddit, uh, which is a great place to share content when you can, it becomes tough because they don't like a lot of self-promotion. So Reddit's a place where, for example, you need to build relationships to be able to, to share content. And then it's not about you promoting your work, it's you've made friends and now you've made a thing that you want to share with your friends and then it's welcome. Snapchat is for young people. So, you know, for example, I make a lot of content for 25 and up. Most of my content is not focused on anyone younger than 25. Uh, now, plenty of people follow me that are under 25 and that's great. Uh, but, you know, what I do on Snap, like I just use Snapchat basically to have conversations with people that I'm already connected to. Um, now, all of these platforms can be used to do promotion, but you, you can rest assured the big, the big names that are doing it to do promotion have a lot more, first of all, social clout than you and money to be able to pay to get eyeballs to see their stuff. So what I recommend, and this is straight from one of my other coaches, before you start worrying about all the 17 different places you're trying to post your videos that nobody's going to watch them on. By the way, Moz, M-O-Z, everybody should be subscribed. If you're subscribed to me, there's no reason why you're not subscribed to Moz. These are, this is part of the group that wrote the book on SEO and you should follow and watch everything they do. They did a study that basically shows that nobody watches the videos people post on Twitter from YouTube. I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what was found. Like People will retweet it and like it, but they don't watch it. So it's a waste of your time. What you want to do is focus on one platform at a time. Right now you're doing YouTube. So just do YouTube. And when you have a thousand followers, then jump onto another social media platform because then you can do what's called cross-pollination, which is you take your thousand followers from YouTube, you bring them over to Twitter, and then you can stay connected with them. And then, you know, by the degrees of separation, you get your thousand people, a certain percentage of them jump on Twitter to follow what you're doing. You're no longer just promoting, you're sharing content with people who are already interested in what you're doing. And if they find it particularly interesting, valuable, or it has some type of social currency where, uh, you know, like the book Contagious teaches, then they'll share it with other people. But just joining Twitter and posting your videos, nobody's watching that. It's a waste of your time. All right, so Deadly Psycho says, do you suggest targeting ages over niches, niches, or both? I, I think you're, you're intermingling some semantic terms there. Um, <clears throat> you should be targeting every demographic or psychographic, so demographic, things like age, things like income, things like region that people live in. Uh, granted, this is YouTube, so some of that is not like income and where people live is not quite as important as age would be on YouTube. Um, you know, male, female, that's important. You should be targeting that and you should be targeting psychographics. In other words, how do these people think? What types of things are they interested in? One of the reasons why I focus so much on personality types is because if you understand who the bulk of the people are that you have the potential to reach, you understand how to tailor your message for those folks. So, this niches versus ages, that's not a thing. So you, you're using some terms there that I think, and it's not to criticize you, it's just to help you, that you don't necessarily understand the nuance there. A niche is, if you're going to talk about a niche, it's all of those things will make your niche. In other words, going back to what was on the board, your choices, where you're going to play, where you're not going to play, who your target audience is and all the market research, 
demographics and psychographics, that is your niche. Ages and niches are not mutually exclusive. All right. Sorry for all the questions. I really appreciate it. No, you don't have to be sorry, man. That's why we're here. What are you sorry for? <laughs> you got nothing to be sorry about. I asked you to ask me questions. How would, that, how would that look? I was like, everybody asks me questions, and then I get mad that you're asking me questions. That, that would, I would be a jerk. And some would argue that I am a jerk. They might be right, but I'm not that bad of a jerk, I hope. So you're welcome to continue asking questions. So it looks like me and Deadly Psycho uh, are the only ones that need questions. Does anybody else have any questions? Because I'm getting ready to go have some nostalgic fun playing Final Fantasy II on another YouTube channel that I own. And that's Final Fantasy II from the Super Nintendo which some of you may know as Final Fantasy IV. And I call it Final Fantasy II because I don't care. And I like the American version with all its dumbed downness more than the whatever. Like, I'm going to play that version of it because it's my favorite. And I'm doing it. So if you guys don't and ladies don't have any more questions, I'm going to go have some fun before I go to bed. So get them in now. And if, by the way, if you have questions about getting the ebook. Or into the academy with the huge discounts. By the way, I have no plans to change this in the near future. Or excuse me, I said that backwards. I have every intention of changing this in the very near future. So if you want to get all the way to black belt for basically, you know, if if I if I make the black belt nine ninety seven like I'm thinking I will, like so basically, if you want to get a thousand dollar program for under 150 tonight would be a good opportunity for you to do that and then keep in mind whatever you know if you get into the blue belt program tonight whenever i do get this up and running uh well if, if you get in tonight you'll be a black belt that'll just be the way it is uh but after the fact if you're watching this later in life and all this stuff is set up that i'm talking about here um uh, if you came into the blue belt let's say and, and black belt is set up what you paid here will count toward what's going on in the black belt. And if you run into any issues, you can email me. My email address is everywhere. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. All of those things. So the system's very new. I have tested it, but it may run into some issues. Don't feel like it's some type of hustle system or something. If it doesn't work perfectly, I will do everything in my power to get you access to what you're supposed to have. And I think I just saw Wells Knight come in here. What? <laughs> Wells Knight, man, long time, my brother. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. So, let's see. D David's Den says, when I post videos from one country, does it get promoted by the YouTube algorithm to the primary country mostly or to the countries of the world equally? So, some of that's going to depend upon what type of video that you're posting but by and large your region is where you're going to get the initial push because remember every country every region has a different url if you will for youtube there like if you go to india's youtube page it's different than the one that i would pull up here in the states so if you're posting content there it's not necessarily going to feed it to the american audience right away but depending on the type of content it is and how much cumulative watch time that you build let's say your video did go extremely viral again depending on what it is and so keep in mind if your video is not in english even if it does a million views it's not necessarily going to make it to the states because nobody's going to understand it okay so what well said is pretty much spot on um your region is the one that's going to benefit from it the most so but like i said different types of content you know, like Gangnam Style, for example, I'd be curious to know if he, you know, started in Korea, but then, you know, because it's in English and it is music, which is the most popular thing on YouTube for the most part in terms of just raw viewership, that has an opportunity to break out of, you know, South Korea and into the public domain, which I'm not even 100% sure that he didn't upload that in the in the US ecosystem if you will um, but a lot of people actually will post they'll have different channels and different outlets especially marketers where they're launching different content in different regions with different languages so that's something to consider as well
So yeah, that's it's kind of a nuanced question where there's no black and white exact answer. But chances are, if you're making a Photoshop tutorial uh, in Farsi or in Amharic, like let's say you're from Ethiopia, um, and you're making a Photoshop tutorial that's in Amharic, chances are that's not going to get a lot of promotion in the United States because the language is in English, and you know, there you go. So Deadly Cycle says roughly 150 for all three belts, so an unlimited amount of time for, yeah, so once you are in the thing, you're in the thing, okay? So once I finish building out the black belt program, and that, what I mean is I'm at, I've coded the section and have uploaded all of the black belt content and made the product, then this will actually get a price. But yes, for one, what, 44, I guess, because I can't, I'm a computer scientist and I can't do math in my head. Um, you would get access to the black belt. You would be in the black belt program forever if you're in the black belt program. Okay. So it's not like once this has a price and the prices go up, you don't like, for example, when we raise the blue belt, like if you join the blue belt, and you got in for the hundred dollars off or whatever. When we raise the price from one ninety seven to four ninety seven, you're not going to get a bill in the mail. You're just in the program. Like for example, there are people in the black belt program that are paying five dollars a month, and that's all they pay. They didn't pay any of this because when I first started the program, I made it extremely cheap, almost free, for Patreon supporters because it was all the people who had been supporting me all these years. I wanted to give back to them, and so I said for early adopters. For the lifetime of the program, you'll pay five bucks a month. So it'll take them years to even get to these fees. You see what I'm saying? So, and they're never going to get a price increase. I'm never going to send them a bill. They're in the program for as long as they keep throwing five dollars a month. At, we don't do it through Patreon anymore, but as long as they keep doing that, and matter of fact, they are not only in all of the belts, they are also VIPs. I, they got everything. So that's why it benefits you to make moves early because you get to take advantage of, you know, before the system is completely well oiled. And this is another thing that you're going to learn as you're building your channels. It doesn't have to be perfect before you launch introverts. All right. All my perfectionists out there that want everything to be insanely detailed and perfect before you launch it, cut it out. All right. You iterate. And YouTube does this all the time. Like when I went to, we had a meeting for partners where I'm from and I went to YouTube and they tell you, they're like, and some of it, we had to sign a non-disclosure so I can't talk about all of it. But the stuff they show you, it's just like, yeah, we, we've been building this for eight years. We just want, we put it up there and we let the audience, you know, we let our users refine it. It's the same thing here. All right. So yeah. For 144 or whatever it is, you will be a black belt member. Now, you won't be in the VIP program because, again, that's a monthly fee for people that get once a month access to me for several hours at a time. Okay? Um, but you will have access to all of the stuff we put in the belts. But like I said, a lot of the content for the black belt I haven't uploaded yet. I think there's only one video in the system right now. And the product, like the part that makes you pay for it, has not been set up yet. That's why you will get access to it without having to pay anything. All right. What are the questions we got? So Well says, also have, I have a lot of friends who are bilingual and have different channels for each language. Exactly. Exactly right. <laughs> Do I still use Patreon? Uh, it's still open, but I don't use Patreon to receive payment for the Academy. The Academy all goes through the website. Let's see. Special, look at indie games and consider emailing devs if you find a game you like. Yes. Um... I've lost inspiration to edit my vids and don't have a large section of games to play either. So yes, what Wells Knight said is spot on. In fact, if you look at my playlist on the front page of my YouTube channel, 
there's a video where I show you, like I give you what I send to developers to request. So Wells Knight and I were getting review copies for games, at least for me, I think Wells is the same. I have been getting review copies for games, and I don't mean like Steam games. I mean like Call of Duty, which one is the one I got? Um, is it up here? No. Call of Duty, what was the one before the last one? The um, Advanced Warfare. Like, I was getting review copies of stuff like that when I had between 300 and 1,000 subscribers because I knew how to reach out to PR teams because I had done a lot of research. Wells is in the same, I don't think Wells, if I remember correctly, I don't remember the last time he paid for a game. So I made a video on how to do that, where you need to go to get the contact information that you need. Uh, and that's a totally free video on my front page in the playlist. Deadly Psycho says, not sure I could be a VIP as much as I would like to. My time is mostly YouTube gaming, Marine Corps, Ura, and Jim. Oh, asleep. So for VIPs that can't be on the live call, I do upload them after the fact. So for whatever reason, if you can't make a call, it's not like it's just gone forever unless I botched the recording, which I've done before. Uh, usually within a couple of days to a week after the live hangout, I then upload the video for the VIPs because we have a lot of people who are don't live in the United States. So they, they totally can't show up at nine o'clock on a Sunday to have it just because they're at work on Monday <laughs> in some cases by the time I start the video. So if time is an issue, then don't worry about it. You still will get access to all the information. And then what you're able to do, because you're not live to ask your questions, all you do then is just go to the Facebook group, which, and by the way, all of the belts get access to the Facebook group. You just go to the Facebook group and ask your questions there. And then uh, me or one of the, and that's the beautiful thing is it's not just me. Like there's other people like Wells Knight is in the program. Uh, and he's highly successful as a gamer and as a Let's Player. And he built his success off of a lot of the knowledge that we talk about here. And he very smartly, he makes highly valuable content. Okay, so he is a master in some, in some cases of the things that I've been talking about all night. Strategy, implementation, building something that's valuable and understanding your audience, okay? These are things he does very well. And he's in the program too. So you get access to these other creators, not just me. Because frankly, the thing I always have to tell everybody, and this goes for any program you get into or any type of mentor you work with, I don't know everything. So I surround myself with people who are smarter than me in certain areas. Okay, you want to get around. There are creators in the program who may not have a channel as big as mine or certainly not as big as Wells, but they know things that I don't know because they have experience and they've done things or they've talked to a mentor that I don't have. So you want to get pieces of wisdom from more than just me or more than just the program. You want to get them by being in a room full of other people who have experiences they can share with you. <laughs> well says my life, army, YouTube, the end. I wish you guys, so going back to the, comments I was making earlier about laziness. So I know Wells personally, we've worked together. I consider him a really good friend. Uh, and like, I know how much work he puts in to make his channel go. Uh, I know how much work I put in too, but I, I have personal behind the scenes knowledge of how much work this dude puts in. And so you see a person like him get to be successful and people you know, people inevitably think, oh, he's lucky or he's got a great voice or the way he does his sound editing is so good. And it's like, give me a break. What he does better than any of you is he understands strategy. And then he understands, you know, the second half of strategy, and this is going to be another video down the line in this series, is execution. You got to do the work. This dude works. I don't, I don't think well sleeps every day. Okay. That's, how much dedication he has to his craft, to his audience and the people that he's reaching. And you gotta develop that. That's what being a ninja is all about. So Wells says, I stay away from AAA games though because even I can't compete for them. And I say that as someone uh, less than a month away from a silver uh, play button. Yep. So yeah, that's a great point that we do talk about in more detail in the program. 
with AAA games, it's a slippery slope. There are ways to kind of make it work, but it's hard and there's some luck involved and you're better off, especially as a smaller channel, um, focusing on areas that don't have as much search engine competition. In other words, search engine competition is not the right word, but you don't have the Rad Brad and 50,000 other people. There's not that many, but you don't have thousands of other people competing for Fallout 4 terminology. So there's certain ways that you can get viewership, but as a smaller channel, you're much better off either playing a AAA game that's a little older, that still has people who are interested in it, but they're looking for more niche content. Not as you know, they've seen Rad Brad, they've seen these other things, and they're looking for something that's a, like a tweak on the theme or absolutely sticking with independent titles that have a lot of interest but don't necessarily have a lot of people making content for them. Although Will says that, but he also is very successful with Minecraft. <laughs> so technically it's not a AAA game, but it's the most popular thing on the internet besides I think Taylor Swift and Madonna once every 10 years when she does a tour of the Bahamas or something. Oh, Super Ohio Brothers is considering the military. Excellent. Yeah, you got a lot of vets. Um, you got me, you got Wells, you got Deadly Psycho. A lot of vets. There's also, uh, at least, besides Wells and I, there's at least one other vet in the academy. I'm, I'm thinking through my Rolodex of the, you know, almost 100 people we've had come through the program. Um, I know there's at least one other one. Trying to think if there's anybody else. Yeah, 120 hours a week between the Army and YouTube, exactly. Oh yeah, and by the way, Wells is married. Good point. So special JKM, most of my day is just full of work and I basically get a few hours for Twitch. Two Raw Gaming says hi. Uh, Game Machine says B, if you get a chance, look up the King of Fighters 14 PS4 review. I ranked near the top of search okay you could just give me a because I'm totally dude look here I run multiple businesses I do I spend some of my free time doing YouTube coaching and I have like 90 children and a white there's no way I'm gonna remember to look just post a link and copy me in the Facebook group dude no way I'm gonna remember that we had that discussion see th let me let me use Adam as an example, what we were talking about with empathy earlier, where you have to understand your audience and what they want. So Adam wants me to come check out this thing, right? But he's just in passing, and I'm totally picking on Adam, but it's cool because we're friends and I can do that. He's like, hey, B, when you get a chance, check out this video. Was, like, not even considering the implications that that request has in my life. Like, I'm ever going to remember that he and I had that conversation. As much as I love him, I'm not going to remember that. So you have to think with the mind of your viewers. What Adam needed to do was, hey, B, I got something I want you to check out, and I'm either going to email it to you or I'm going to put it in a place and copy you so that you remember. So I use that as an example of, as human, by the way, I'm not picking on Adam. That's every human. When you start talking about, when we get into our discussions about psychology and biology and how they drive everything we do and how that plays into video virality, I just did a talk with our VIP folks on that two maybe th four weeks ago at this point. And when you understand that it's really just biology and psychology that drive it, one of the things you have to understand when you're doing your market research, the reason why you're doing it is because you have to understand how your audience thinks and what they want because you have to put your story in the terms that they understand. All right, so I'm only picking on Adam for the sake of using that as a teaching point for the rest of the people watching this. Yeah, Wells, we can definitely chat after the stream, brother. So, let me, so for those of you who are losing sleep, um, let's go back to what we talked about from Gary Keller's book earlier in the talk. So, 
you know, I just told you guys I run, you know, I own, let's see if I include my wife's business. So I, I own a business that has sub businesses under it. I have a family. I have multiple children. Uh, I have three YouTube channels, one of which releases content every single day. The other one's once a week, Alloy 7 and my personal one. So, and I still, on average, get seven to eight hours of sleep a night. So what you have to do is going back to what Gary Keller said, is not try to balance your life. You have to counterbalance your life. There are times, there are Saturdays, not today. Today I had kind of a lazy day because I'm way ahead on my work. So for example, with the channel that uploads content every day, I have content done all the way through November. Why? Because I took two Saturdays and did it all. And I didn't do anything else on those Saturdays. All right, I had a little time with my kids and you know, a little time, like I think I took my one of my my youngest child out to play some football or whatever but by and large i spent the bulk of that day just doing youtube stuff so i got all caught up on the bryant chambers channel you know alloy 7 i didn't have to do because i do most of our stuff live and my other channel i did god only knows how many videos but then the next day or during the week i didn't do any youtube content nope i'm just and so i'm counterbalancing like this week i need to focus on my kids this week I need to focus on some of the stuff I'm doing like in life coaching with real people, you know, the things that I do in my actual life that feed my family. So but that's not to say that there aren't nights where I lose sleep because there are. There are there was a lot of those Saturdays where I was up till 4 a.m. working and then up at 8 a.m. the next day to face the children and do what I had to do. But instead of trying to balance your life and fit everything into every day, split it up, prioritize and then figure out, okay, today I've got to go hardcore on, uh, like for example, when I was building out the strategic objectives for my entire business, there was a day where I just did that. I couldn't do any YouTube content. Uh, like I always make at least, at least a little bit of time for my kids, whether it's you know bath time, bedtime, reading stories, or prayer time. But there's days where I don't see them for the bulk of the day. because I have. To, and then there's days where it's all about them. I'll take them and we'll travel to my parents' house where I'm originally from and we just hang out with grandma and grandpa. So it's, don't try to balance your life, counterbalance it. Some days you're gonna to have to be hardcore over here and lose some sleep, but by and large, I will average anywhere from six to eight hours of sleep a night because I prioritize it. Like I can't be functional. And, and, and by the way, I also work out four to six days a week hard and I physically train other people. I can't go into the gym and give somebody everything I've got if I don't have any sleep and I haven't eaten properly. Okay, so it's part of it is prioritizing um, and knowing where, when, and where you need to focus your time and your energy. And some nights you, you're just going to lose sleep. It's part of trying to grow anything of value, but it shouldn't be, you know, your whole life is I'm getting three hours of sleep a night because that will eventually kill you. Okay. Lack of sleep is killing more people than a lot of other vices that are out there. And I know a lot of us are exaggerating and stuff. I mean, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just trying to give you some information that can potentially help you. Yeah, so Deadly Psycho lives in the barracks. It's extremely hard to make YouTube content. So. Maybe for this cycle of your life, I don't know what your rank is, but there will eventually come a time, depending on where your station and what your rank is, when you can move out of the barracks and into an apartment. Maybe right now is not the time where you remember counterbalancing. Maybe right now is not where you put all of your eggs in the YouTube basket. Maybe right now you just focus on your studies, you know, going to the NCO board, you know, making rank and doing what you need to do as a Marine. And you, you can sneak some YouTube stuff in, but maybe right now what you do from a YouTube perspective is everything on the strategy side of the board. Maybe you're not making content. Maybe you're taking a year to figure out and you're going hardcore in your free time instead of recording. Remember, tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. And if you're all over here doing tactics and upload schedules and what videos, what games am I going to play this week? If that's all you're doing and you're not doing any strategy, it may take you a long time, but you're eventually going to lose if you're over here, maybe you just spend a year not making content, but figuring out where you want to play, where you don't want to play, 
who's your target audience let me learn everything I can about that target audience all things that you can do with your roommate in the room maybe right now for your counterbalancing the creation of content is not where you need to be focused not saying that that's absolutely true just food for thought in your particular situation because remember you will eventually have time to make the content it will become available to you but you you've got to consider opportunity cost and take advantage of what's available to you and do take the actions that are going to get you the optimal outcomes based on the opportunities that you have before you okay <laughs> well it says hasn't killed me yet <laughs> It says ETS can't come soon enough. <laughs> well said, man. Well said. So Psycho says, I just picked up Corporal. Uh, if I pick up again, I get my own. There you go. Also planning on getting married. There. You, well, I, I wouldn't get married just to move out of the barracks, dude. <laughs> but I, I get your point. So there you go. Maybe until you get picked up for, um, so you went from Lance Corporal to Corporal, help me out with Marine rank. The ne next is Sergeant, right? So once you hit there and you get your own room, let's say it takes you a year or six months to get, to make rank again, cool. Then for six months, you're doing strategy. You're writing out, okay, my target audience, and I'm going to Google, and I'm going to all these different tools I have at my disposal to figure out what the strategy for my channel is going to be so that when you will actually launch your channel and start doing the tactics i'm telling you with my second channel that's why i was telling you guys in the email about zero to 400 subscribers virtually overnight it's because i spent you know the channel has been there for six months i wasn't doing anything with it but every once in a while uploading a bible study and i just i honed in on okay where's the target i want boom got them let me do all the research i need to do so like, make no mistake, the videos that I'm doing and the order I'm doing them in are part of a strategy. It's not me sitting down every week and saying, what videos do I want to do this week? No, I have a strategy that's dictating everything that I'm going to be doing for the next 18 months. And it's working. When I do the tactical stuff, it's working because the strategy is sound. And if you can do that, then by the time you hit the ground and start making content, you'll hit it running. A lot like Wells Knight did because he put the time in to understand the strategy. To understand, remember going back to the earlier part of the discussion, understanding how YouTube actually works and what people are looking for when they come there. You know, going back to the example of why I said I stopped doing live streams, because I understand what live stream viewers are looking for and it's not what I want to give them. Right? So you don't have to do a ton of experimentation to figure that out. Well, you got to do some. You have to test your strategy, but spend a lot of your time refining the strategy so that when you get ready to do the tests, my tests were all set up before I ever hit record on the camera. So Sergeant is the next rank, cool. Yeah, Outlook Calendar is glorious. You gotta have, you. and so going back to the tactical discussion, somebody brought up earlier, well like, don't you have to have a schedule? Yes, you do. In fact, I made a video about that years ago. You have to have a schedule. You have to like, I not only have a schedule, like I have a spreadsheet that's gonna, that's showing you everything I'm doing for the next forever. Not only that, I have a schedule for when I'm doing the recordings a month from now. And it adjusts based on what's going on with my family. You know, I also take care of an elderly family member. Um, so that eats up a lot of my time as well. That's another thing you can add on the pile of stuff that's going on in my life. But yeah, like I know when I'm going to be doing this, you know, or at least thereabouts where I'm going to be doing it. It has to adjust sometimes because contingency happens. You got You do, because we're so focused on strategy, it doesn't mean we don't plan. My point was that if you start planning before you have a strategy, your plan is going to take you to defeat. You got to do the strategy and then you get into your planning and then you get into your systems and your tactics. All right.
Cool. Thanks, Wells, for posting that. That's awesome. So, yeah, you guys definitely... So, here's what I recommend everybody do here, too. Subscribe to Wells. Not just to keep up with his content, because his content's great. But watch what he's doing. Especially you gamers, especially. Watch what he's doing. Watch how he does it. And never be prideful. Like, this is one of the things I don't understand about human beings. When you see somebody winning... Instead of copying what they're doing, and I don't mean plagiarizing, like copying his content, but instead of copying his system, which is clearly working, because he just said a month, he just said a minute ago, in a month he's going to get his silver play button. That means he's going to hit 100,000 subscribers. That's a big deal. YouTube takes that very seriously. So instead of watching what he does and copying the system in the areas where it applies to what your goals and your objectives are, people arrogantly would just be like, well, I'll just do my own thing. Like, why would you do your own thing when you could just look at all the people who are winning? You know, people sometimes think it's crazy that I talk about PewDiePie and I cite him as an example of success. And I'm like, well, when you have 50 million subscribers, I'll copy your channel. You know, I taught that in one of the one of our VIP calls. I actually we went through PewDiePie's channel and I pointed out some of the things that he does. So for example, one of the things he does from an editing perspective is the same thing television does. And it's totally it's not genius. Like people, oh he's a genius. No, he's just smart enough to figure it out. I need to do it the way these folks do it because it works. For again, for the type of content he makes. So he uses a principle that's used in making television. And then I showed the layout of the page and why it's important that it's the way it is in terms of drawing the eye down. Like, you should be following people like Wells who are already winning. Like, for example, in the gaming space, one of my mentors and inspirations is Mark Bustler from Classic Game Room. That's the type of content that I enjoy as a gamer. I'm not a big PewDiePie or Markiplier. Like, I respect those dudes and, you know, I respect their success. But that's a kind of a, I don't want to say it's a younger generation thing. It's just, it's a type of content that I didn't grow up with. Like, I grew up with the more Monty Python-esque, kind of weird, awkward, you know, silly but insightful at the same time humor that Mark uses on his channel. That's way more, now granted, if you look at PewDiePie's numbers and look at Mark's numbers, it's not even close. But the point is, if what Mark is doing is winning to me, no, he doesn't have 50 million subscribers, but he runs a business where he hires lots of people, even with only less than half a million subscribers. He runs a viable business where, as a matter of fact, he was in my book. I had to work with his attorneys to get my book approved. Nobody that's broke has attorneys. I don't care how many subscribers they have. So if he is winning to me, you know how much time I spend on his, I, I've spent a lot of time on his channel. I've bought all of his DVDs. Every, well, other than the fact that I like his stuff, I'm also researching and I'm studying because if that is what is winning to me as a gamer, then that's who I should be emulating. Even if he's not, because remember, I always say, for me, subscribers were never a huge part of the game. It's how effective can I be in the lives of other people? And can I draw money out of it? I draw way more money out of the products I sell than I will ever draw. It doesn't matter how big or small my channel gets or doesn't get. The money here will always be higher than AdSense is going to pay me. 100% of the time. So I've built the systems that in the event that this channel does get bigger, or even if it doesn't, it's still viable. It makes, can help you, you know, depending on what you do, make more than what a person in AdSense may do who may be way bigger than you. So, and it's not about competition or any of that. My point is, you need to be following people like Wells Knight, I was getting around to saying, because if you're a gamer making Let's Plays, why not take cues from a person who's doing it very well? I take cues from him. I look at his channel, I'm like, okay, how did he do this? So my point is, don't be arrogant. You know, I coach YouTubers, but don't think for a second that I don't look at other YouTubers and see, okay, what are they doing? Because that type of humility is the, t is the humility that winners have. You know what I mean? Like, one of my mentors, uh, one of my business mentors, and a very close friend of mine, is a he runs multi-million dollar corporations. And 
I, I took a he and I took a vacation together, our families, and we're in the we're in the car riding together. He's asking me for marketing advice. This dude has been in business longer than I've been alive. He's asking me for online marketing advice and tips and ideas and how did you do that thing and how did you navigate the monetization space on YouTube dealing with copyrights and how ASCAP and BMI work with music. He's like, walk me through and then Disney was having, like he, he successful people are always curious and they will learn from anyone. They don't have the pride that people and the, you know, people kind of, the underground people have where I need to pretend like I'm better or smarter than I am. I'm not, remember, the key here, I am smart enough to know that I am dumb enough to need to ask other people for help. But highly successful multimillionaires, and you know, I had a billionaire mentor that I used to work for. They ask questions, they, they're curious. They, they don't come thinking they know everything. Like the dude I told you about in the beginning of the video who asked me for SEO tips on titling and then told me that that was bad advice, even though that's the textbook answer written by the people who built the stupid search engines. Those are the people who are losing. The billionaires aren't like that. Okay? So you need to be following people like Wells. Even if you don't care for the type of content he makes, what can you learn from it? Because you're not going to learn everything you need to learn to be successful just by doing it yourself. You've got to get other people who can help you. And if you can't afford coaching, then get free coaching by following other people who are successful and studying everything they do. Like I said with Mark, bought all his DVDs. I watch everything he taught. And I'm telling you, like he drops, and you got to remember, Mark has been doing online video marketing since before YouTube existed so he knows the game. He knows the changes that YouTube has made over the years from 2008 to now. Because I think he didn't get on YouTube until 2007 or 2008. But he understands the change and the shift in the marketing and how things changed when Google took over because he was here. And he also had nine years of experience in filmmaking and marketing films online and offline to be able to apply that knowledge to YouTube. So... You know, he has a video where he went to a live convention and I was taking notes like he was doing comedy, but he was totally if there were any creators in the audience, he was totally dropping science. And I was like, I can't write this down fast enough because I can use that. Just like I told you, I was on the call with the completionist and watching the behind the scenes um, session that we were in with their business meeting. And you look at how they run their business and you think it's just some dude that gets on camera and is funny. No, it's an operation, man. Strategy. All right. Deadly Psycho says, not sure how you work, but maybe you know you're being... Oh, okay, he's talking to Wells. Sorry. Good. People are subscribing to Wells. And, and remember, I'm not telling you to subscribe to him to get his numbers up. Trust me, he's going to get there whether you subscribe to him or not. I'm telling you to do it for you. Go, go watch what he's doing. Even if he's not making the type of content you want to make, look at the value he adds to people. And the cool thing about Wells is he's so modest. He'll tell you, you know, what I make is not the most awesome thing on the planet, but he downplays the amount of value the stuff he makes actually has for his audience. You know, and I know that because I have learned not just YouTube stuff from looking at his channel, but I've learned, um, you know, how to apply things in games that he plays that I'm completely ignorant about. All right, so 
Any more questions before we get ready to shut down? Hay más preguntas o no? For my Spanish speaking friends out there. All right. Hey, Wells, how do you want to connect after the show, brother? What's the easiest way to get to get in uh, contact with you so we can catch up, brother? So Rez asks, how do you think I can grow with more subscribers? Simple. The right content for the right audience at the right time. That's what this, so if you came late to the video, it's going to take a couple of hours or so to process in the YouTube system. Just, just watch the video because what I'm sharing with, you, sharing with you in this video will certainly help you with that. Roger that. Skype it is, my friend. Excellent. He said no hablo Spanish. <laughs> That Deadly Psycho says, have fun with Final Fantasy 2. I will, man. I've been looking forward to playing it all day. I've been playing a lot of Japanese Super Famicom games um, today. Like, today was a rainy. Like, I went for my three or so mile uh, heavy ruck run today. And then I came home and it was all rainy. And I was like, I'm not going outside today. Today is going to be an old school video game day. So I went... Um, Got a bunch of the old Super Famicom, Super Nintendo games I have and just having a ball, man. Didn't film any of it. It wasn't for YouTube. It was just for me to have some fun. All right. So it looks like we've taken care of all the questions. Look, if you guys have more questions after the fact, there's at least 10 different ways you can get in touch with me. My email address is on the YouTube channel. You can also go to the Facebook group. Uh, a lot of people do ask questions there. Hopefully you saw the part of the video talking about monetizing videos with music in them. Let's try to cut down on the, hey, can I monetize this 50 cent video? No, you can't. No. No is the answer. So just cut it out. <laughs> but if you do have some legitimate questions about strategy or tactics or about the programs we offer or anything like that, feel free to, you can leave a comment here after the fact. Don't leave it now until the video is finished processing because it'll remove it and I won't see it. But you can email me or send it to the Facebook group and uh, we'll go from there. As always, friends, if for whatever reason you're not subscribed to this channel after all this, then go ahead and do that, not for my sake, but for your sake so that I can keep you abreast of everything that's going on. Remember, the ebook is completely free just for joining our mailing list over at alloy7.tv slash ebook. And the Ninja Academy, I've already given that whole spiel, so I'm not going to go through it again. But remember, friends, as always, we do this, hopefully, to have a positive impact on your life, help you to reach whatever your goals and dreams may be. And until next time, until all in one, remember that we are stronger than a lot than a lie. <laughs> we are stronger than I. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Peace.